Then, this fall, every Friday night, it's the high school football game of the week. Presented by Wellspan Sports Medicine. Only here on Sports Radio 1350. The revolution plays here. Play ball! The new Sports Radio 1350. Revs and the Barnstormers tonight. And it, probably the most that's been on the line in a matchup between these two in three years. They had uh, duked it out for the first half title in 2014 with York winning. Last season, the Revs had gotten into the postseason by way of eliminating Sugarland in the first half. And uh, probably the most that uh, has been on the line between these two in three years. And Matt, last night, going back to that walk-off win for a moment, really one of the biggest victories of the season, maybe the biggest to date, especially since it's the most recent, but to come in with a two-game lead, that's a lot different than only being up one beginning this series. Yeah, no doubt about it. And just the feel of that win last night, walking through the clubhouse, it was by far the most animated those guys had been the entire year. It was the third walk-off win, but it just felt different. Something was different. It was louder. It was more excited. The team had come together. And just in talking to people today, not just you know on the player side of things, but even in the front office, this is the most fun group of players that they've seen in quite some time. People were comparing this team on the field, the way they have come together, the way they've produced over the last couple weeks to the championship teams that were here in 2010 and 2011. It, it has been awesome. It, uh, you know, you look at some of the things they've done here this past week, it makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Some of these wins they've pulled off and last night included and, you know, they were a team that was, you know, moving along, winning series, doing their business, but now they're pulling off wins incredibly, and they're starting to believe in their ability to do that down to their final out and, and trailing by multiple runs or whatever the case. Yeah, no question about it, and it's just the confidence. And, I, you know, we talk about when the team was losing in the first half and whether it be the inability to come through with the two-out hit or letting lead slip away later, the you know, struggle to tack on runs to, to put a lead away, that losing can become contagious. It can become habit forming. You can become down on yourself, lose confidence, and kind of expect those results. And the same is certainly true, if not more true, when you're winning. And it's so contagious. It's not just one guy, but it spreads up and down the order. And you just get the sense that no matter what the case is, we still have a good chance to get it done. I think tonight, uh, one thing that this team has done is they've stayed loose. I can't recall a night where, yeah, they, they might try to do a little too much at the plate sometimes, but I don't recall a night where they haven't gone into a game loose. And I think they're having a lot of fun with this. You get that sense too? Oh, absolutely. And Mace talks a little bit about it on the pregame show, the mentality that Alonzo Harris brings. And he talked about it in the interview that you did with him that, you know, he said, I just want to go out and play like I played in Little League and have fun. And I, I think the same thing w was said to me by Josh Wilson when I interviewed him earlier this year after he had departed once he got signed uh, by Texas that he said once he came to the Atlantic League there was kind of that that pressure was taken off he was able to go out there and have fun and it it made him relax it made him produce it in a way that he hadn't before and I think you know guys want to be an affiliated ball because it's a step closer to their dream of the major leagues but part of affiliated ball also means that someone's coming for your job every single day and you're kind of looking over your shoulder in every game that you don't get a hit or two hits you you think that maybe the job isn't yours anymore and so i think there's a tendency to press a little bit more whereas right here in this situation you really get a chance to go out and have fun well the revs will send jay goss who's been a huge reason for their positioning here in this second half eight and two to the mound tonight brad bergeson for lancaster we'll check in with mace on that matchup and uh, the big win, the comeback in the ninth last night, and some other topics as well. Broadway Transmission Manager's report is coming up next. This is Dustin Hawkinson with the Keystone Sports Network. For the best Penn State football analysis and commentary, listen to Sports Radio 1350 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 8 a.m. and after Revs games for the Keystone Kickoff Show. 
We'll bring you game reviews, player evaluations, and recruiting news. So for the best in Penn State talk, tune to Sports Radio 1350 WOYK for the Keystone Kickoff Show. Brought to you locally by your neighborhood SureSave Markets. Hi, this is Dan Patrick. Join me weekday mornings at 9 on Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Fans, it's time to go inside the clubhouse for the latest on your York Revolution and tonight's matchup. It's time for the Broadway Transmission Manager's Report. Now, here's the manager of the Revs, Mark Mason. Well, Mason, again, a comeback down to your final out last night. And uh, when you do that a couple of times, does a team's confidence start to grow in, in those situations? Well, I think so, and I think more importantly, that was a big hit for Chase. You know, I think to give him a little more confidence too. He's been swinging the bat better, but you know that should help go a long way in the bat before he just missed a three-run homer. So, <laughs> um, no, I mean, it, it, right now, you know, I, th- I think the guys believe they can win no matter what the situation is, and 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 they're battling all the way to the end. And you know, if we get it done, great. And if we don't, we've at least always brought the tying run or the winning run to the plate at some point so we're um you know we're we're, we're playing hard and um, you know we're trying to keep grinding it out well uh, coming through there offensively in, in the last at bats and before that it, it was kind of a struggle throughout the course of the night some opportunities and uh, sometimes when when pitchers really slow the pace down does that also affect hitters does it make them a little bit uh, impatient or, or get them a little you know, on their heels or whatever. Well, I, th- I think it does. I mean, it's usually as a pitcher you want to work fast, but you know, Irvine he he didn't want to work fast. He's he's always worked, you know, deliberately. I guess would be a good word instead of saying slow. But um, you know, I mean, it just it, it it just it's it's a grind sometimes. Like there's no rhythm to anything when the game's going like that. And usually as a pitcher, you want to work fast. And then if you run into trouble, you can slow your pace down a little bit and you know try to collect yourself. And usually what hitters will do if you're really rolling, they'll they'll ask for time to try to break up your rhythm. But um, the guys were asking for time last night because it was taking forever for the ball to come to home plate. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, sometimes they were getting it and sometimes they weren't. But, I mean, it, it does affect you, it, you know, as a hitter just to stand in there and wait and wait and wait to see, uh, you know, to see the baseball. On the other side, Logan, another quality start. And for you, was it a continuation of what he did in Sugarland? Absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, and, and he really did a good job. We made a couple miscues behind him there in the one inning. And, you know, he did a good job. He just kept getting ground balls and ground balls. And, you know, we ended up getting a force out at the plate. Then we get a double play with, you know, the plate to you know, home the first. And, um, you know, and, and, and he, I think he filled the two of those balls, actually. So, you know, he filled it his position and he pitched his way out of it. So, um, no, he, he did a really good job last night. You've got Jay starting tonight, and last couple of times he, he's had to battle a little bit. Is he still close to where, I mean, the first several starts he had really been lights out. Is, is he close to being in that form and, you know, just a couple of those outings where you've got to fight a little bit more? Well, I mean, I think he's. I think the form and, and all that is there. I just think he he was a little bit sore. Maybe one of the outings he had a little bit of a thing going on. Maybe in, in up in his back area. I mean, nothing major, but I think that might have been part of it that was affecting his mechanics and making him not able to extend when he released the ball. And I think he was cutting the ball off a little short, which was. He was pulling the ball down and away, you know, from the right-handed hitter, and and he was walking some guys and getting behind in the count. So, I think, you know, he's had some work on that between starts. So, um, you know, I, I think he feels pretty good today, and you know, we'll see when we get out there. Facing Bergeson, and, and obviously you had him in relief. He was trying to come back from injury at that point. Now with him as a starter, what are some of the things you've you've seen him try to do as he approaches a game from the first inning? Well, I mean, he keeps the ball down in a way um, on the right-handed hitters, and he stays out there pretty much. Uh, 
You know, I mean, he's. I don't think that he'll pitch to the short part of the park here, which would be left field. I don't think he'll do that, at least not consistently. Uh, you know, he has he has a couple good pitches, but everything is kind of down and away from the right-hander. So I'm anticipating that we've seen Brad before this. You know, before during this uh, during this season too. So um, I'm just expecting the same guy. I mean, he he'll use two pitches and he'll just keep using them over and over and over and you know and just sequence them differently and stuff like that but he's going to work really hard at keeping the ball down and away from our right-handed hitters so we'll just have to you know we'll have to be patient and we'll probably have to hit the ball the opposite way tonight to, to have success heading into this series you've got two series left with these guys both here in york and um what's the sense with with your team excited having fun today loose ready to go well, this this group's been having fun for a while. <laughs> you know, th- this half we've been having a lot of fun, and you know, it's uh, the clubhouse is noisy, which is a good thing. There's a lot of stuff going on. Guys are laughing and you know doing their thing out there. But um, you know, when they get in the dugout, it's they're still having fun, but it's it, it's work fun, and you know, I, I don't think they're putting any pressure on themselves. They're just trying to relax. I think Harris said it the best when he said. We're just trying to take it back like when we were in Little League and play like kids and have a good time and, you know, and then see how it goes from there. So, uh, you know, the approach every night is to come out and play as hard as you can and, and, and as well as you can. But, you know, the other teams are trying to do that, too. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, we've we've been on a nice little run here and, uh, you know, it's. You know, hopefully we can finish out this homestand with uh, winning another series. All right, Mace, thanks a lot. Good luck tonight. Yep, thank you. All right, Revs manager Mark Mason on the Broadway Transmission Manager's Report. Getting set for game time tonight. And, yes, the York Pretzels have taken the field here this evening as we pay homage to some York history and certainly snack food, a big part of the uh, York County heritage, if you will, and revs in these pretzels jerseys. They're gold with, I, I guess, mustard colored would be the better description on the front and back. The sleeves are actually pretzel dough colored with sprinkles of salt mixed in and a pretzel dough colored hat with a white front panel and the revs Y logo with some pretzel colored <laughs> outlining of it. It is, it's a good one, and I'm sure those will be auctioned off pretty fast and furious tonight. Jay Goss and his pregame warm-ups on the hill there in the Barnstormer lineup brought to you by Flying Feet. It'll be Bo Amaral, who we see for the first time leading off in center. Garrett Weber, the second baseman, bat second. Hitting third in right field is Cole Garner, who we see for the first time since last year when he was with New Britain. Sean Halton, the left fielder, will hit cleanup. Steve Clevenger at first base bats fifth. Josh Bell is active, playing third base and hitting sixth. Lance Zawadski, the shortstop, will bat seventh. Anderson De La Rosa does the catching, hitting eighth. And Tyler Clark, the DH, is batting ninth. Again, Amaral, Weber, Garner, Halton, Clevenger, Bell, Zawadski, De La Rosa, and Clark. Facing Goss, who comes in tonight, an 8-2 and two record, a 322 ERA. Had to battle a little bit more in those two starts that he made in Sugar Land. Four innings, five runs the first night. Five innings, three runs the second start. Lost the first one, no decision in the second one. But prior to that, had won five in a row and is eight and two coming in. Our Dasher Investment Services first pitch here tonight. And it is over at the knees, a called strike on Amaral leading things off. Left hand hitter for the Barnstormers hitting 293 in 33 games played. Pitch is fouled back and out of play. Goss quickly in front and he has started on the road five straight outings. It's his first home start since July 25th when he beat Bridgeport 9-1 to with only an unearned run given up. Here's the kick and the 0-2, and it misses outside. Now, Goss, Matt, a fan of the black uniforms, so that'll be an adjustment tonight. 
Yeah, he said, what's the deal with these pretzel jerseys? Are we, are we actually wearing them tonight? We sure are. The one, two. And it's ripped the other way. Right there is Simpson. Picks it to his left. Gets lined up to first and makes the throw. One down. And Amaral hit it sharply, but Simpson, the pick, reaching to his left and found his target. A ground out to start the night. The Barnstormers, just at the top of the order, have lost Darian Sanford, Rico Noel, Amaral, only two steals, so not the same type of threat at the top. Here's Garrett Weber. He swings, grounds one weakly. Simpson lays out. It's backhanded by Dent. The off-balance toss, and safe is the call at first. It was close. Nash stretching up the line. Thought he held the bag, reaching back at his right foot. James Clayton, the first base umpire, walking forward to give Nash an explanation. And it's an infield hit. Simpson, who dove, just missed. And then Dent did all he could, backhanding off balance from deep short. And a really good pick over there by Nash, too. He got an in-between hop, and it looked like the call, like you said, Daryl, was that he was off the base. Stretching a little bit to the right field side, but a heck of an effort to pick that ball on a tough hop. A one on with one out. Cole Garner, the hitter. Barnstormers are in their alternate red jerseys with the road gray pants. And pitch from Goss. It's in there for a strike. Frank, you really are played on tonight. We mentioned Clayton at first base. Bill Reuter is the judge at third. First pitch was at 634 tonight. It's 80 degrees at game time, mostly cloudy. There's the 0-1, and it slides way outside. Garner hitting 277, six home runs, 27 driven in and 38 games played. He was their team MVP three years ago. He hit 26 homers, drove in 92. Pitch is swung on, looped at short. Dent going out towards shallow center, runs it down. He makes the grab, Garner got jammed, and a bloop to shallow center. Dent tracks it down for out number two. And so far early, Jay Goss really working the inside of the plate to right-handed hitters. Two ground balls to the left side and then a pop-up off the fist. Not afraid of on the short side of the park, he's a guy that likes to work in and doing so regardless of being home for the first time in a calendar month in one of his starts. Here's Sean Halton, first pitch. It's a fastball just inside. Drew an extra long look in from Jay. Halton hitting 264, the league leader with 24 home runs. Leads the league by one, also leads in ribbies with 79. Pitch is a breaking ball and a called strike. Good one from Goss. Home run total, one ahead of Southern Maryland's Michael Snyder, who's got 23. He's the league lead in total extra base hits as well. On the 1-1, one -one, and it's down low. Halton has done some damage against York. Homered in the All-Star game this season. And it took them a while for Casey Hobson to be supplanted by anybody on the league lead in homers. Pitch is a changeup. That just missed. And fans getting a little bit restless, being questioned from the Revs dugout if that was low or not. Three and one. I believe it's the first changeup he's thrown. Maybe fooled the ump. He deals, and it's just inside. Ball four on Halton, and that'll put two men on. We mentioned the first changeup he threw a couple of pitches ago. It wasn't until the Halton at bat that he broke off that breaking ball either. He really went fastball heavy right out of the gate. Well, now we'll face a hot hitter with two on, two out. And it is left-hand hitting Steve Clevenger, who in 33 games hitting 274, three homers. Former big league catcher, 
pitch is in tight. He's playing at first base tonight. Has a hit in eight of his last nine games, 364 on that stretch. 170 big league games. Pitch is ripped at first, and it's picked by Telvin Nash. Up to his feet. He runs to the bag and saves a run. Clevenger pulls a hot shot to first, but Nash, a backhand pick, sprawling out. Beautifully done to end the inning. No runs, one hit, and two left. We've played a half. It's the Barnstormers nothing, and the Revs coming up. You hear a lot about CPAP masks these days, but here's something you don't hear much about. Over half of the people who wear a CPAP mask for sleep stop wearing it within a year. How's that working for you? Dr. Gordon Bell would like you to hear this. York Dental Sleep Therapy has dental options that can help many of those people. If you or someone you live with is struggling with sleep apnea, visit YorkSleep.com and see how Dr. Gordon Bell can help return your home to peaceful nights of deep, restful sleep. If you're groggy during the workday, if you wake up feeling exhausted, if you would like to get your nighttime sleep patterns back to a healthy state, get a confirmation from your doctor, then meet with Dr. Bell at his office on West Market Street in Hallam. He'll evaluate your symptoms and discuss which treatments would best suit your situation. Dr. Bell can restore restful sleep and get you feeling better day and night. York Dental Sleep Therapy. Call 316-1299 or visit YorkSleep.com to learn more. York Mitsubishi Super Summer Sales Event is on. Featuring Outlander Sports starting at 18 735 Or 0% financing available for up to 72 months. Right now, $2,500 off all 2017 Mitsubishi Lancers. Or the 2017 Outlander with standard 7 passenger seating and discounts rebates up to $4,000. York Mitsubishi Super Summer Sales Event with a great selection and over 70 cars available. York Mitsubishi just off Route 30 and Rosemont Avenue in York, where Mitsubishi's always cost less. Sale ends 831. This is Brad Allen. You're listening to York Revolution Baseball on the home of the Revs. Sports Radio 1350 W-O-Y-K. First in York, first in sports. <laughs> help. The cannon has been blasted. Steve Janis, the honorary Cannonball Charlie assistant here in the first couple of innings tonight. The bullpen went nuts when their mound mate did the honors. Now the Revs set to go facing Brad Burgess and Alonzo Harris leads off. First pitch of the night is down and away. Set the lineup here momentarily. Zoe in left field tonight, third in the league and hitting at 327. The wind and the 1 0. And a fastball over for a strike. Harris, fifth in home runs with 18, leads the league in runs scored and slugging. Third in on base and hits. The wind, the 1 1. And a fastball across for strike two, 88 miles an hour. Going back to Janice real quick, who would have thought that one of the Revs would look sillier than the rest of the bunch wearing pretzel jerseys? <laughs> Pitch, and a swing and a miss. Tied him up with a fastball in, maybe off the plate. A strikeout to start the night. Revs lineup brought to you by Flying Feet. Harrison left. Alexi Casilla at second. Isaias Tejeda catching tonight, hitting third. Michael Burgess will be the DH hitting cleanup. Talvin Nash, first baseman, bats fifth. Jared Mitchell in right field hitting sixth. And then Ryan Dent at short. Chase Simpson at third. Travis Witherspoon in center. Here's Alexi. First pitch, fastball, missed down and in. Casilla hitting at 357. He's hit safely in six in a row. Here's the 1 0. And a swing and a miss. Fastball. What do you have out there, Matt? Uh, Janice just derobing in right center field. <laughs> Thought he might hang out there for a while, wait for his team to get a full inning of action. Here's a ground ball to first and picked by Clevenger. Feeds Bergeson covering for out number two. 
Kind of stabbed down at an in-between hop, but gloved it cleanly. Two up, two down. And Clevenger playing first here for the Barstormers. He has pretty much ever since he was signed, but he's a guy who came up as a middle infielder, initially was drafted as a second baseman, but then later converted to a catcher in the Cub system. Now two down, here is Tejeda, who DH'd last night, got back in there with a four hit game, four for five. Fourth in the league in batting at 323. 15 homers, also fourth in RBIs with 68. He's hit safely in eight in a row. And Bergeson deals. Missed outside. Tejeda second in the league in total hits. Just two out of the top spot. The 1-0. And it missed a little bit low. Rebs have seen Bergeson a couple of times this year. Overall in 20 starts, 9-7, and seven, ERA of 427. And it, he definitely pounds the strike zone. Only 22 walks in 20 starts. He deals. And a swing and a foul back over the roof. It's 22 walks in 116 innings. 73 strikeouts. Has given up 135 hits. Opponents hitting 288. No score here in the bottom of the first. Pitch is looped toward the first base dugout, and that'll get in about three rows behind Revolution HQ. It's two balls, two strikes. And here's a pretzel jersey clad downtown in front of our booth. Kind of matches the, the gold hair, but I'm gonna, I'm going to say it clashes with the rest of him. The 2-2, and it's lined the other way. Base hit to right. The Tejeda shoots a rocket the opposite way. And it's a nine-game hitting streak. Hit number 135 on the season for him. And going back to yesterday, that's now hits in five consecutive at-bats. His four-hit game yesterday, his third such of the year. Get Michael Burgess to the plate. Each team with a hit. And Burgess DHing the night, hitting 270. 13 home runs, 55 knocked in. Burgess in the stretch, the pitch, and a swing and a foul back. Burgess up there firing away. Ferguson, a no decision, his last start. Six and two thirds, two runs at Long Island. Barnstormers lost 6 5. He had a 4 0 lead through five and then gave up a run in the sixth. Pitch is a foul tip off the glove of De La Rosa. And it's 0 and 2. Ferguson did start the first half playoff game essentially. Suffered the loss at Southern Maryland. Five innings, five runs. Against York in two starts, one and one with a 231 ERA. He's ready. The 0 2. And a changeup missed down low. It was with York in relief in 2015. Coming back from some previous injuries, and he was very effective, but. Suffered a horrible looking injury on the mound, did have to undergo surgery. He misses outside with a changeup, one and two. But it's still the only time in person that I've, or two and two make that, the only time in person I've seen a pitcher throw a pitch, grab his elbow and extreme pain and hop off the mound knowing that he was done. Seen it on TV, but it was a bad moment. 2-2, and it missed away. So Burgess works it all the way full. Tejeda will be on the move. And it's important for the Rebs to make Burgesson work. He's a guy who's logged over 116 innings now this year, but 
doesn't really have the ability to go all that deep into games. Usually just a five-inning guy. So if the Revs can get into the bullpen early, they certainly did that against Somerset. Really make starters work, get that pitch count up there in the early going. Here's the stretch. Tejeda goes, pitch is a broken bat, grounder to second, and Weber right in front of it. The bat won't quite get to him. And an uninterrupted play for him as he throws on to first. Bat broken half, no runs, one hit, and one left. We go to the second, no score. Sports injury? Walk into Wellspan Urgent Orthopedics for immediate care. No appointment is ever needed. Our orthopedic and sports medicine specialists are here to treat you. Visit wellspan.org forward slash urgent orthopedics today for hours at our York and Hanover locations. The York County Economic Alliance is York County's primary business resource, representing over 1,100 member businesses and 50,000 employees in York County. The YCEA serves to lead economic growth, connect local businesses, and to create a prosperous York County. This month, the YCEA celebrates the anniversaries of these members. Gladfelder, Anstat Communications, RG Group, RKL, Bucard Horn Incorporated, the York County Economic Alliance. Together, we prosper. Visit YCEA. Are you one of the many people that has a 401k that is eligible to roll over, but you just haven't done it yet? Maybe you're not sure where was the best place to put it. I'm Tom Dasher of Tom Dasher Investment Services. I specialize in helping you getting your 401k and IRA money parked in the best place for you. So if you haven't rolled your 401k yet, or if you're not satisfied with your IRA, call me for a consultation at 487-2096. That's 487-2096. And check out my website. At, Tom at the York County Solid Waste Authority, we urge residents to properly dispose of household medications. That's why we put secure medication drop boxes in 16 police departments. Drop old meds off for free. Learn more at www.ycswa.com. Garbage is power. The revolution plays here. Play ball! The new Sports Radio 1350. As we head to the second inning tonight, Matt's got a helper on his lap, which would be my son, <laughs> who broke in. He infiltrated the system and has made his way into the booth. Here is Josh Bell, who takes down and away for ball one to start the second inning. Barnstormer's hitting coach, who is active. We saw him hit a homer here earlier this year as Goss misses a little bit high, 2-0. Was he good for you? Yeah. Okay. He was welcome to stay. Yeah. Here's the 2-0. And a swing and a line drive right center deep into the gap. It's trouble and it's gone. It carries out of here onto the lawn in right center. Josh Bell does it again. His third home run in 33 games. Two of those have come right here. This one a line shot, just a nice easy swing and it took off. And Lancaster has struck first, it's one nothing. And the last time he did it was really right after he'd been activated. He was activated just as a precautionary measure in case they needed him, the roster getting a little thin and he told me he hadn't even really taken batting practice, just did some tee work and hit a home run in his first at bat. <laughs> Here's Lance Zawadzki, who's back with Lancaster and takes a strike. But now that Bell is playing more frequently, I presume he does take BP on a regular basis. Here's a swing and a miss, change up from Jay. Good late dart on that. Zawadzki, who last season was dealt to Sugarland midway through the year, won a championship with him, started the year there this year. Pitch is rolled over to second base. Grounder to Casilla. He's up with it. Side arms to first. One down. And uh, he had played 32 games with Sugarland. Got hurt against York. Lower body injury. And it cost him really about three months. And just reacquired by Lancaster. It's his third game back. By the way, speaking of Sugarland, certainly thinking of 
the Skeeters with the impending weather. And they're in the northeast right now at Southern Maryland tonight, but next week they're supposed to host New Britain. I, I don't see how that can happen. Here's Anderson De La Rosa who takes a strike. We were just there and it's strange to think that it went from you know, 96 degrees and sunny to a hurricane approaching. Here's the 0-1 and a swing and a miss, a slider from Goss. De La Rosa, the K-man tonight. He's hitting 249, three home runs. Goss winds and the 0-2. And a swing and a miss, a high fastball. Some Moz sticks with the pretzels tonight. And there's two down here in the second inning. Well, Goss got ahead and he went to the heater, ran it up the ladder. That was at least shoulder high when De La Rosa committed. Now with two away, here is Tyler Clark, DHing the night. First pitch is outside. He's their backup catcher, but they have to use both tonight. Some guys banged up. They just lost Lasting's Millage for the year with a broken thumb. The 1-0. And that skips in the dirt inside. A couple other guys day to day that they were trying to figure out if they could go tonight. The lineup was, well, it was in time for the game. Pitch is beaten foul at the plate, two and one. Clark hitting just 163 with a home run and 10 ribbies. The cloud cover starting to separate a little bit. You can see a little bit of blue sky. Lights halfway on the pitch. And a swing and a foul back over the roof. Two balls, two strikes. Goss looking to retire the next three after the home run. one nothing Lancaster here in the second inning. Wind and the pitch. And a breaking ball hooks low. The Revs' four-game winning streak is their longest of the year at home. It ties, or I'm sorry, it's one shy of tying their longest overall. Pitch is driven foul the other way, out of play left field. They had won five in a row to begin August. Two at home against Long Island and then three at New Britain. The wind, the 3 2, and a ground ball, second base hit weakly. Casillas got it, sidearms to first, inning over. Josh Bell does give Lancaster the early edge, a solo homer. And we played an inning and a half. It's Lancaster 1, York nothing. You line your feet up on the edge of the starting block, shake out your arms, and then you push off the block in one fluid motion, fully extending your body and cutting into the water with nothing on your mind but the mechanics. You're a swimmer, and whether it's practice time in the pool or crunch time at a meet, Flying Feet is with you every stroke of the way. Flying Feet. Flying Feet Sports Shoes is a swimmer's paradise. Get suits by Dolphin, Speedo, Nike, Arena, and Tier. Pick up practice gear, team gear, and training equipment like fins, snorkels, and kickboards. The Flying Feet team has high-tech competitive suits, customizable caps, goggles, even goggle repair items. Shower down with swimmer shampoo and body wash, plus suit wash to limit the wear and tear of chlorine. Time to dive into the pool? Then it's time for Flying Feet. We're more than sports shoes. Flying Feet. 1511 Mount Rose Avenue, York, just off exit 18 of I-83 next to Battery Warehouse. Planting a tree, putting in a mailbox, whatever your project, Columbia Gas of Pennsylvania reminds you to be safe and call 811 before you dig and know what's below. Safe digging is no accident. Call 811 at least three business days before you start your digging project and your utility companies will come out to mark any underground lines near your work area. Calling 811 is free for Pennsylvania homeowners and it's the law. For more information, visit ColumbiaGasPA.com. This is Houghton Buchanan. 
You're listening to York Revolution Baseball on the home of the Rebs, Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. First in York, first in sports. Lancaster, an early 1-0 lead on Josh Bell's home run. He has taken two swings in this ballpark this season and has hit one onto the lawn. I think the first one was pretty much over the lawn. This one wasn't quite as deep, but also his 100th Barnstormers RBI. Talvin Nash will lead things off as the Revs look to answer. Nash, a seven-game hitting streak coming in tonight, fresh off a night off. And Bergeson ready to work, first pitch. It's inside. Nash at 316, eight home runs, 25 driven in in 25 games. Bergeson with the 1-0. And a ground ball sharply at second. Knocked down by Weber. Picks it up. The throw to first will get Nash, who wasn't quite getting down the line as well as he normally does, reaching at the back of his right leg. And hopefully something lingering, not something new. But ordinarily, he might beat that one out. Weber had time to recover and make the throw. Yeah, definitely reaching for that quad. And I know he was banged up earlier this year when he was in the White Sox system and that played a part in his demotion and ultimately opting out of his contract. So hopefully nothing serious there for Telvin. Here's Jared Mitchell with one down. And Burgess in the pitch. He shows bunt. It's a called strike. Mitchell eighth in the league in hitting, 297. Fifth in doubles with 30, also 11 home runs. Nine game hitting streak for him. There's the 0 1. And a swing and a chopper to first. Clevenger in. He'll scoop a short hop and takes it to the bag unassisted. Two ground outs in the inning. We'll pause for a station ID. First in York, first in sports. <laughs> Your only local sports station. The new Sports Radio 1350. W-O-Y-K, York, Pennsylvania. Two down. Here is Ryan Dent. Batting at 263 with five home runs as he digs in. one nothing Lancaster here in the bottom of the second inning. Bergeson the pitch. Fastball over for a strike. Last four outs have been ground outs for Bergeson. Here's the 0-1, and a line drive right center field, base hit for Dent. He rings that one into the alley, backhanded by Garner from right, who cuts it off, holds him to a single. But Dent with a hard hit knocked the other way, and the Revs have their second hit. And both Tejeda and Nash waiting back, hitting it hard the opposite way. And we talked to Mace earlier, and he said that's how this team is going to have to hit if they're going to have success against Burgesson, at least the right-handed hitters. He's going to keep it down and away, and they're going to have to see it deep and hit it that way. And Tejeda and Dent both doing so and hitting it hard. Here is Chase Simpson, last night's walk-off hero. The RBI knock down the line. First pitch slider, it's over for a strike. He really smashed that walk-off hit last night. And then pummeled with ice. Revs with their third walk-off win of the year. 10th, or 11th I should say, last at bat win. Fourth in the last eight days. 0-1, and a swing and a high fly ball, right center, Amaral chasing it deep, it's carrying, it is caught, just in front of the fence in right center. He just missed again, he's come so close, the last couple of nights to a couple of big flies, and this towering shot grab just short of the wall padding in deep right center. 
No runs, one hit, and one left. We go to the third inning. Lancaster with the early 1-0 lead. Money and business are essential to the strength of a community. So is cheering and celebration and music and fun. That's why York Revolution games, concerts, youth sports, special events, and more happen at a place called People's Bank Park. People's Bank has been serving York County for more than 150 years. Always cheering, always celebrating, always committed to the things that make York County great. And to you having a great time at People's Bank Park. People's Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Getting pumped for another year of high school football? All this month, Sports Radio 1350 WOIK lays it all out for you in the High School Football Spotlight. Presented by Wellspan Sports Medicine. Catch a preview every day in August on Sports Radio 1350 as we break down the teams and the players of the 2017 York Adams League. Or go to WOIK1350.com to access this year's complete lineup of high school football preview. Then, this fall, every Friday night, it's the High School Football Game of the Week. Presented by Wellspan Sports Medicine. Only here on Sports Radio 1350. <laughs> Hear that? It's the sound of summer. Sound nice? Call Kona Ice. We do it all. Schools, sporting events, parties, both corporate and birthday. You name it, we'll be there. We bring the party to you. If you need a little bit of fun in your life, we're the shaved ice truck for you. Oh, and we fundraise too. This summer, cool down with Kona Ice. Give us a call at 1-800-KONA-ICE or visit us online at www.kona-ice.com. Kona Ice, flavor our world. This is Jay Goss. You're listening to York Revolution Baseball on the home of the Revs. Spurt Radio 1350, WYK. First in York, first in sports. Trail 1-0 as we head to the third here tonight. A Josh Bell home run leading off the second inning and opening the scoring. It'll be the top of the order for Lancaster. And Bo Amaral, who ran down Chase Simpson's high drive that seemed to have an extra gear as it took off and sailed deep, but just not quite enough. Now here's Goss's first pitch, and a line drive right field base hit. Amaral jumps on the first one and pulls it through into right. Now they first pitch single, and Lancaster with their leadoff man on. It's their third hit. Garrett Weber up next, had an infield hit in the first inning. First time Lancaster's faced Goss. Coming in, his ERA would be third in the league if he had enough innings. Pitch to Weber, a changeup just missed, a little high. Last 13 games for Weber, 375. He comes in tonight seventh in the league in hitting, 302. Pitch is on the outside corner, a slider for a strike. And it's really amazing what he's done for the Barnstormers this season entered as fifth infielder, nothing really more than that, and all of a sudden played a pivotal role in lifting them to a, well, tiebreaker game for the first half. 1-1, one, one, and a fastball missed down low. They would not have gotten there without his performance in the final actual week of the first half. I think he had six home runs in a week, was it? Yeah, I believe I believe that is the number. The 2 1 and a fastball strike on the outside. 2 and 2. Teams meeting for the first time since the series right before the All Star break. 2 2 and a breaking ball just missed high. And Weber with a full count. The stretch and the payoff pitch runner goes and it's popped up foul and out of play on the right side Lancaster who leads the league in steals but the guys that have gotten them there no longer there and Amaral now in the leadoff spot again we mentioned only two steals in 33 games 
Noel signed by the Astros. Sanford signed by the Nats. Pitch is grounded left side. That'll skip through. Back-to-back -back singles. Amaral not running on that pitch. And Weber skids it through the left side of the infield. Pretty big hole over there. He hit it right through the middle of it. First and second with no outs. Well, Rev's looking at turn two there. Dent shaded up the middle a little bit, and Weber just pulled it a little bit too far. If he'd hit that one right at Dent, it would have been a tailor-made double play with the ball hugging the ground. Now Cole Garner up next. Bloop to pop up to short his first time. Goss ready. First pitch is fouled against the screen. Those two that we mentioned that, that were catalysts in them leading the league in steals, Noel and Sanford still ranking fourth and fifth in the league respectively, but they've been gone for a while, especially Sanford. was basically replaced by Noel when he got picked up. Noel came back from Mexico. Here's a ground ball to third. Simpson's got it. Goes to second. Casilla the turn in time. 5-4-3 double play. And Goss comes right back with another ground ball. This one at Chase. The ball stayed low, but he stayed low with it. And a big double play turned, Amaral to third with two outs. A really nice reaction there by Simpson at third. Like you said, the ball stayed down. I think it hit right where the dirt and grass come together on that cutout. And he, he had to stab the glove down right underneath of him, but then turned it beautifully. Yeah, he will face Sean Halton from the windup. First pitch breaking ball, and it bends across for a strike. Halton, who walked his first time tonight. League leader in RBIs with 79 and home runs, 24. A peek over at third. Goss, the windup, the 0-1. And a fastball a little high. Tejeda came up ready to throw, but Amaral wasn't too far off. Or at least just looking him back. 1-0 Lancaster here in the third. Jay trying to keep it at one. Now winds up the 1-1. And down and in by Halton's back foot. Last time that Lancaster was here, June 25th, Halton was at the center of a skirmish. He didn't care for being hit by a Curtis Parge pitch. Here's the 2-1. And a breaking ball down and away. A couple of ejections on that Sunday afternoon, but it was Tejeda and Trayvon Robinson for shoving. It was not for Halton who left the batter's box. The 3-1. Breaking ball, line to left, and it is caught! A diving play! Alonzo Harris lays out and saves a run. He steals Halton's 80th RBI. And Alonzo coming in, lays out to the backhand side just above the grass. Makes an outstanding diving catch to end the inning. Goss escapes trouble. No runs, two hits, and one left. We go to the bottom of the third. Still 1-0 Lancaster. Take it from me, guys. You want to make life happier? Your wife wants a nicer lawn. The kind of lawn you see on Home and Gardens and Martha Stewart. Here's a hint. You're not alone. Call your pals at Heritage Lawn and Landscape Care. They've got a way with lush lawns that the ladies like. And as you know, happy wifey, happy hubby, winky face. Heritage Lawn and Landscape Care. World-class care right in your backyard. 717-292-9994. For Manny Brothers, almost famous, always a favorite. For Manny Brothers, almost famous sandwiches served on Italian bread. Your choice of meat piled high with cheese, fresh... Thursday 
and Thursdays, it's Primanti Pizza Feast Wings and Salad for under 20 bucks. He's flying with 59 cent wings all day Sunday and boneless wings all day Monday. Primanti Brothers, 2151 South Queen Street. Almost famous, always a favorite. It appears both sides have made their arguments and deliberations have concluded. Now, it's hard to tell from where I'm standing, but it looks as though they're about to render their decision. Hang on, hang on. That's it. OJ is free with the purchase of a dozen maple donuts. A dozen vanilla sprinkles for me, please. Again, this just in. OJ is free with the purchase of a dozen maple donuts. And as always, every dozen is a baker's dozen in a big white box with orange maple donut lettering. How's that for memorabilia? Maple donuts taste right. This is Logan Williamson. You're listening to York Revolution Baseball on the home of the Rev Sports Radio, 1350 WOYK. First in York, first in sports. Only a one nothing game thanks to Alonzo Harris who laid out, stole that RBI hit from Halton. Travis Witherspoon leads off the bottom of the third. And the first pitch, he shows a bunt. Bergeson misses down and away. Witherspoon acquired from Lancaster for Calvin De La Cruz last June. Here's the 1 0. And it misses down. Witherspoon, Harris, Casilla here in the bottom of the third. Spoon at 270 coming in tonight. Six home runs. The 2 0. And it's down again. Ferguson missing low with the first three. Three 0 pitch. <laughs> Taking all the way, and he held his bat straight out across home plate. Maybe trying to distract Ferguson. Did not work. 3-1, and it's down and outside. Now he's got ball four. Lead off man on for the first time tonight. First walk from the righty. The average is about one per start. And here's Alonzo Harris at the top of the order, struck out his first time. Josh Bell in a step at third, but I wouldn't think Harris is bunting here. Certainly can handle the bat, but with no outs, I think he swings away. He's got done swatting at some gnats. First pitch is over for a strike. I think Ferguson took something off. So looking down at Polo at third. Witherspoon, 15 steals. And he'll draw a throw back on a dive. De La Cruz known as a very good thrower. Did I say De La Cruz? De La Rosa. I feel like I do that too, once, once a game when we play the Barnstormers. There's <laughs> the 0-1, he's running. It missed outside, the throw to second, right on the money. Weber, the tag, and he's out. Perfect throw. And De La Rosa has now gunned down 25 out of 74. Just above 33% on throwouts. And Witherspoon got a great jump. He was going before Bergeson even broke the hands, but he just picked the wrong pitch to go on. And a catcher who has a cannon for an arm. There's a fastball just missed away. Two and one on Harris. And Bergeson lifts, fires, and missed low again. Well, Rev's trying to make something happen on the bases, but had they waited out Bergeson, here's the 3-1, and a swing and a fly ball or pop-up at second base. Weber's under it and squeezes, so he does come back to get Harris. A pop-up. And with the bases empty, two down. Alexi Casilla coming up. He 
Yeah, the Rebs have had two De La Cruzes. Calvin, the pitcher who helped net them Witherspoon last year, and Luis, the catcher, two years ago. First pitch to Casilla, and he tries a drag bunt, and Bergeson will cut it off, running toward first. Underhand flip gets him, and Alexi, a good idea if he pulls it, but a little bit too directly back to the pitcher. And the Revs end up down in order. We go to the fourth. Matt with the play-by-play. -play. Revs trail the Barnstormers 1-0. You'll always hit it out of the park with great Best Yet products from your neighborhood SureSave stores. Like party platters with 1893 deli items. Team up Best Yet hot dogs with Best Yet kettle cooked chips. And get Best Yet 12 packs of soda and Best Yet Rising Crust pizzas at Sobel's Markets in Shrewsbury, Stewartstown, Whiteford, and East York. And at Nell's Market Fresh Foods in Spry. Facing a legal issue can be a frightening time. What's my course of action? How do I know who to call? Fortunately, the York County Bar Association makes it easy. Now, you only need to make one call to find the right lawyer for you. Call the York County Bar Association and let us help you find the right lawyer with our Attorney Connection Lawyer Referral Service. Just call 854-8755 or visit yorkbar.com. Don't hesitate in getting the help you need. Contact the York County Bar Association and let us help you find the right attorney at the right time. Enter Rudder's Summer of Freedom Sweepstakes today. Look for the entry star, purchase participating products, scan your Rudder's rewards card, or enter VIP information at checkout and automatically be entered to win your choice of a 2017 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport, Ram 1500 Bighorn Quad Cab, or Dodge Challenger RT from Stetler. Drive better, drive Stetler. Free gas for a year and one of thousands of prizes, including Red Bull, Pepsi, and Pennsylvania Lottery scratch-off tickets. Must be a Rudder's VIP to enter. Enter. Rudders, why go anywhere else? This is Luke Westfall. You're listening to York Revolution Baseball on the home of the Revs. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. First in York, first in sports. Top of the fourth we go. Steve Clevenger, Josh Bell, Lance Zawatsky. 5, 6, and 7 in the order against Jay Goss. Lancaster 1, York nothing. A solo home run from Josh Bell in inning number 2, the difference. Clevenger up from the left side. And the first pitch, a fastball splits the plate in half. Strike 1. Clevenger, once a switch hitter, now exclusively from the left side. And the 0-1. That one misses in the dirt. A breaking ball will even the count. Goss making his first start this season against Lancaster. Three earned runs or fewer in 10 of 11 starts, and he missed just inside a breaking ball. Close pitch, and so far a relatively small strike zone from Frank Urilli. Two balls and a strike. Jay Wines and the pitch. Fastball, it just missed outside this time, and it's a hitter's count. Three and one to Clevenger. Clevenger. A seventh round pick by the Cubs in 06. Now in his 10th pro season, the 3-1. Outside corner for a strike. Goss went with the changeup in a hitter's count. And that runs it full 3-2. Clevenger debuted with the Cubs in 11. And the 3-2 just outside ball four. He works a leadoff walk. Second walk of the ball game given up by Goss. And he was awfully close on a few of those pitches, but again, not the biggest strike zone from Urilli behind the dish. Here's Josh Bell. Bell, the hitting coach for the Barnstormers, activated midway through the first half and now an everyday third baseman for them. Switch hitter batting left, and the first pitch popped up foul and out of play left side. And that is the first time Bell has taken a swing here in York against the Rams and not hit a home run. He's hit two first pitch home runs, one in the first half and one in the second inning. It has the Barnstormers ahead 1-0. The 0-1 pitch, breaking ball in there. And Goss in the driver's seat at 0-2.
Bell, 6'3", 230, a switch hitter. From Rockford, Illinois, in the back door, breaking ball misses low. One ball and two strikes. Runner at first, nobody down, top of the fourth. Goss kicks, and the 1-2 up and away with the fastball. 92 there from Goss, but he lost the release point. And the count even at two balls and two strikes. Infield looks to turn two, outfield plays bell to pull. Goss checks, and now the 2-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Runner goes to throw down the tag from Dent, not in time. The throw a little to the second base side of the bag, and Dent had to leap over the runner, Clevenger. And Clevenger has a stolen base on the strikeout. So out number one, as Bell is retired, but now a runner in scoring position. And that'll bring up Lance Zawatsky. Zawatsky, a left-handed hitting shortstop for the Barnstormers. Just his third game this year with the team. And the first pitch, high and away, a changeup, ball one. For Clevenger, that's just his first deal of the season. Not a guy you would think would run a lot, a catcher for most of his career. Goss takes a look back, and now the 1-0. Swinging a number up the third baseline, that'll trickle foul. Did stay fair a lot longer than I thought initially off the bat. Made it about Three quarters of the way down the line before taking that turn. Chase Simpson collects and tosses into the seats. Zawatsky coming over to the Barnstormers from the Skeeters, and that was to complete the trade that sent Kevin Ahrens down to Sugarland for a player to be named later. It now is Zawatsky. And the 1-1 pitch popped up, fouling out of play. A change up from Goss, and Zawatsky out ahead, just got a piece. Zawatsky had been with the Barnstormers 2014 through 2016, was traded down to Sugarland last year, and now sent right back. 1-2, the delivery from Goss, outside with the fastball. Up to 93 that time. So Jay increasing the velocity as he's gone along. Started off around 88 in the first inning. We've seen him as high as 94 this year. Two and two the count. A check back and the offering from Goss. Down and in, blocked by Tejeda. A hard slider in the dirt will run it full. Zawatsky, a fourth round draft pick by the San Diego Padres back in 07. Went to San Diego State University and interestingly enough, was the first person to get a hit in Petco Park. Well, the Padres Stadium opened, and it was not as a member of the Padres. Three and two the count. And the pitch from Goss, check swing, down and in, ball four, and no swing, says Bill Reuter, the third base umpire. Two walks in the inning, and the Barnstormers have two men on. That first hit for uh, Zawadzki in Petco Park was, as a member of San Diego State, his freshman year, they were the first ones to open up that stadium before the Padres ever got a chance to. It was the college team making an appearance there. Paul Fletcher out of the dugout to make a visit, check on Goss. Tejeda joins him, just the three of them on top of the mound. One nothing, the Barnstormers here, one run, four hits, no errors. The Revs, no runs, two hits, and no errors. That'll bring up Anderson De La Rosa as Fletch heads back to the first base side dugout. De La Rosa, a strikeout victim, his first time up. Will come up now with two men aboard. De La Rosa digging a foothold in the back of the third base side batter's box, taps the outside corner. He's ready to go. Outfield plays him the opposite way. Infield looks to roll it. 
And the first pitch, fastball and a swing and a miss. Tailing away at 90 miles an hour. And De La Rosa reaching for it off the outside edge. Both catchers in the lineup tonight. Tyler Clark, the backup in the DH position tonight, waits on deck. The 0-1 fastball outside again, this time skied out of play, right side, 0-2. So Goss in the driver's seat. Jay originally drafted by the Indians in the 25th round in 2010, did not sign. Was slated to go to NC State, but was ruled ineligible by the NCAA Clearinghouse, went to Pitt Community College instead. Breaking ball inside corner, got him looking. Started it at the front shoulder of De La Rosa and broke it back over the plate. Strikeout number three in the game, second in the inning. And two men gone here in the fourth. First looking strikeout for Goss. Now will bring up the ninth place hitting Tyler Clark. Goss redshirted his freshman year at Pitt Community College due to a tour labrum. He suffered it his senior year in high school, but didn't find out about it initially. Clark first pitch, swinging line drive towards right field. That's down for a hit. Holding up at third base is Clevenger as Mitchell gets it back into his cutoff man. And now the base is loaded for the Barnstormers with two away. Clark first pitch, swinging, lines it into right. And that'll turn the lineup over for Bo Amaral. Fifth hit of the game for the Barnstormers as Amaral comes to the bat. Amaral, a left-hand hitting center fielder. Goss with the bases full will go from the windup. Amaral this season with the bases full, one for four. A grand slam. And the first pitch change up drops in there, 0 and 1. One of seven grand slams that the Barnstormers have hit this season. Pretty remarkable total at this point. And the 0 1 pitch, check swing, down and in. And no swing, says the third base ump, Bill Reuter out there in the middle of the diamond. Tejeda dropping to both knees on a pitch that had a lot of late break down and in towards the shoe tops of Amaral. Bo, one for two. The ground out to third, a single through the right side. Infield backed up, outfield plays him to pull. And Goss will step away and ask Tejeda to relay the signs again. Goss now says yes, the righty kicks, and the 1-1 pitch, swing and a miss. Slider down and in, Amaral chased it in the dirt, one and two. Amaral signed with the Barnstormers on July 21st. They have six position players that we have not seen since the last time these two teams met a month and a half ago. The one-two, fastball just missed the outside corner. 93 from Goss. And Amaral watching it just off the plate. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bases full, top of the fourth. Goss ready. The wind and the two-two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Slider. And Amaral chased it below the knees, and Goss strikes out the side. He loads the bases on two walks and a hit, and strands all three. And after three and a half at People's Bank Park, it's the Barnstormers one and the Revs nothing here on 1350 WOYK. At Donegal, we understand there are many costs associated with running a business. That's why Donegal works with you to provide quality insurance products based on your business needs and why we deliver that insurance at a price to fit your budget. Call your local independent Donegal agent today and discover why, when it comes to insurance for your business, Donegal is a better value. Contact Coatman Kunkel Insurance at 717-854-0300 or stop in at 3217 East Market Street, York. Locally owned and operated by Pam and Rudy Coatman. Coatman Kunkel.
Horizontal Insurance. Hey, Revs fans, now's your chance to win big with the Revs and Shipley Energy. This season, during every home game at People's Bank Park, it's the all-new Shipley Energy Grand Slam inning. Each game, one inning will be designated, and one name will be selected as the contestant. If the Revs hit a Grand Slam that inning, you could win $5,000. To enter, stop by fan services and fill out your form, or enter via the York Revolution app or yorkrevolution.com. Sign up today and win big with the Revs and Shipley Energy this season. Okay, John, shelves are stocked. So are the new fast play games from the Pennsylvania Lottery. Just pick your game, get your ticket, and see if you've won. Like Sunny Money with top prices of five grand. Yep, winning's never been faster. Not faster than me clearing these shelves. Dude, I hope you're even faster at restocking. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fast play. Play fast, win instantly. The Pennsylvania Lottery. Players must be 18 or older. Please play responsibly. Benefits older Pennsylvanians every day. This is Michael Click. You're listening to York Revolution Baseball, home of the Revs, sports radio, 1350 WYK. First in York, first in sports. Coming to bat here, home half of the fourth. They trail the Bar Swarmers 1 0. A Josh Bell solo home run, the difference. It'll be Isaias Tejeda, Michael Burgess, and Telvin Nash. 3, 4, and 5 in the order against Brad Bergeson. Bergeson, two hits and a walk in his first three innings, that all. And Witherspoon, who walked last inning, thrown out trying to steal. So Bergeson has faced just two over the minimum. Tejeda steps in, already extending his hitting streak to nine with a single in the first. And now time called as the Revs catcher will step away. Tejeda now 16 for his last 35. A four hit game yesterday. Bergeson the wind and the first pitch. Outside corner with the fastball, strike one. 88 from Bergeson, and that's where he likes to live. Down and away to righties. He kicks and fires. Another fastball down and away, this time a number foul. To hit it in the hole, no balls, and two strikes. To hit it yesterday with his third four-hit game of the year. 42 multi-hit games overall. And the 0-2 pitch, swing and a tapper, right slide, slowly hit. Weber, the second baseman, waits and now slings it to first for out number one. So Tejeda set down for the first out of the inning. And of the 10 outs that Bergeson has recorded, seven have been on the ground. Here's Burgess. He grounded out to Weber at second, his first time up. Lefty against righty. And the pitch on the way. Fastball up and away, ball one. Burgess, a 284 average and 11 home runs against right-handed pitching. 11 of his 13 long balls. The 1-0 line drive towards right field. That's down for a hit. Got it off the end of the bat, but pulled it in there. And Burgess is aboard with a one-out single. That'll bring up Telvin Nash. Nash had the night off yesterday. Back in there at first base tonight. Round out his first time up. He's hit in seven in a row, eight for his last 28 over that stretch. Nash going with the high socks tonight. Blue tape on his bat. And the first pitch, cutter in there, strike one. Nash, 25 games played for the Rams, 25 runs driven in. Eight home runs gives him 36 in his career. Back with the Revs for his third season. 
Bergeson kicks and the 0-1. Richborn hit slowly to the left side, charging his bell. He'll turn to second one. The return throw to first, not in time. Nash hustling down the line will beat it out and prevent the Barstormers from turning two. Nice play by Josh Bell, charging in, throwing across his body to second. And we have been told that his knees are certainly a question mark for his health. Part of the reason that he was not on the active roster to begin the season, but certainly couldn't tell it on that play. Fielder's choice, Nash replaces Burgess now with two down. We'll bring up Jared Mitchell. Mitchell now back in there in the six hole. He'd been up in the three hole with Tejeda out the last few nights and the pitch grounded foul up the first base side. And even with Tejeda coming back last night, it was Mitchell staying in the three hole and Tejeda hitting four. But now back to the more traditional look with Nash back in there in the five hole as well. Mitchell, a nine-game hitting streak, and he's reached base in 29 straight home games. Fifth best in Revs history. The 0-1. That one's a change-up, missing down and in. One ball and one strike. Mitchell, 11 for 34 over his nine-game hitting streak. And over his last 38 games, has tallied 25 extra base hits. A 1-1 pitch, he started to go, holds back on a fastball that caught the zone. A pitcher's pitch, knees inside corner. And Bergeson ahead, one and two. One nothing Barnstormers, bottom of the fourth. Two down, Telvin Nash on it first. Bergeson kicks, he fires, and that one's down in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes, trying to break off a hard cutter or a slider there. Mitchell, a ground ball to first base, his first time up. Infield and outfield play him straight up. Bergeson checks first, and now the 2-2. Two -two. That one's down low, ball three, and the count runs full. Everybody can go so Telvin Nash will get a head start off first. And the first time he was up, we saw him run down the line a bit gingerly. Was able to beat out that fielder's choice a moment ago, so we'll see how he's feeling as he takes off here. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Burgesson ready and deals. Runner goes and Mitchell fouls it away. Trickling up towards the first base side dugout. And Nash will head back to first. Mitchell, another lefty in this order who has done very well against right-handed pitching. Mitchell hitting 323 this year against righties. 10 home runs for Mitchell and of his 13 of on the season, 10 have come against right-handers. Payoff pitch, swing and a miss, he got him. Mitchell chased the fastball off the outer edge, and he set down on strikes to retire the side. One hit for the Revs, one man left, and after four completed People's Bank Park, it's 1-0 Barnstormers on 1350 WOYK. Brimmer has been York's licensed and notary specialist since 1969. An approved online messenger for PennDOT, it offers registration and driver's license renewals, online title transfers, money orders, and notary service, all with a friendly staff that guarantees your satisfaction. For more information on Brimmer's convenient hours and fast service, call 717-699-1060 in York or visit them on the web at brimmers.com. Brimmer Fast Licensing and Notary Service with four convenient locations in York and Lancaster. Need material handling equipment for your company's busy season? Mid-Atlantic Industrial Equipment offers a full line of rental equipment to keep you operating at maximum efficiency. Forklifts from 3,000 to 15,000 pound capacity, narrow aisle reach trucks and order pickers, electric pallet jacks, scissor lifts, and forklift clamp attachments. Daily, weekly, and monthly terms available. Call today at 888-383-LIFT. That's 888-383-5438. And check us out online at midatlanticindustrial.com. You trust AAA to work at every mile. 
But AAA doesn't just cover your car. They can also cover your home. AAA Home Insurance protects every square foot. And when you add AAA Home Insurance to AAA Auto Insurance, you get more protection and more savings. Insurance that's not just insurance. Talk to your local AAA insurance agent today or visit AAA.com to learn more about AAA Home Insurance. This is Paul Fletcher. You're listening to York Revolution Baseball in the home of the Revs. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. First in York, first in sports. Back here at People's Bank Park heading to the fifth and the first pitch from Jay Goss is just a little bit low. Ball one to Garrett Weber. one nothing. The Revs trail the Barnstormers. And the 1-0 breaking ball drops in there to even the count at 1-1. One and one. Weber, Garner, Halton, do up. 2-3, 4 in the order. Goss working quickly. The 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. He pulled the string at nine, uh, sorry, 74. Nearly a 20 degree, uh, 20 mile an hour difference from his heater. He gets ahead. 1 and 2. Goss kicks, fires. The fastball line foul sharply off to the right. Hopefully everyone's okay. A late swing there from Weber. Once again, that speed differential really potent for Goss. Low to mid 90s on the fastball can drop to low to mid 70s on the changeup. Goss back to work, the one two pitch, high and tight. Sailed on him a little bit. That one was 94. The count even at two balls and two strikes. Weber is hit safely and 13 in a row, but now, sorry, it was in his last 13, 375, but Goss gets in there, a punch out outside edge. He was frozen, fifth strikeout for Goss, out number one. Here's Cole Garner, 0 for 2. Pop out in a double play ball. Righty against righty as Garner digs in. Goss winds and the first pitch. Slider and it missed down and away. Ball one. Garner, a 26th round draft pick from the Rockies in 03. Made his big league debut for Colorado on July 4th, 2011. And the 1-0. Fastball in tight. Garner tucked the hands in. Two balls and no strikes. Four games with the Rockies in 2011. The 2-0 pitch. That one's down and away. Ball three. And he picked up his first major league hit with an RBI single off of Nationals' Ryan Matthews. He was, however, thrown out at second base on the play. Goss winds the 3-0. Fastball in there for a strike, middle half, or inner half, I should say, middle in. So it's a hitter's count, three and one. Goss ready, he kicks and fires, and that one's popped up, fouling out of play right side. And Jay Goss works it back to a full count, three and two. Garner also in the Yankee system, Brewers, Blue Jays. Also played for Southern Maryland in 2013 before joining the Barnstormers for the first time in 2014. The payoff pitch, fastball popped up right side, foul ground. Nash trots over, has a look, but it's back and into the seats. Garner made his pro debut in 2005 was slated to do so after being drafted in 03, but injuries held him back for two seasons. A 3-2 again from Goss. Fastball just inside, ball four. It's a one-out walk. That'll bring up Sean Halton. Halton, one for or 0 for 1, he walked in the first and then made a bid for a hit down the line and left, but Alonzo Harris made a 
diving catch to save a run and end the third. Runner at first, one away. Goss working from the stretch and the first pitch. Fastball popped up, back of short. On the infield, Dent calling. Now he comes in and towards the dirt, onto the grass, makes the catch, two gone. Two men gone for Steve Clevenger. One nothing, the Barnstormers out in front, top of the fifth. Mentioned Clevenger got his start with the Cubs. And then he was a part of a big trade going over to the Orioles. First pitch on the way, back to her breaking ball and Goss gets the call, 0-1. Goss was acquired by the Orioles with Scott Feldman in a trade that sent Jake Arrieta and Pedro Strope to Chicago. Pitch on the way, misses high. One ball and one strike. Clevenger last playing with the Mariners, but broke his hand last season midway through. It ended his year. And the 1-1 pitch, there's a strike outside corner. 91 from Goss. He hits his spot, gets the call. And ahead in the count, 1-2. and two. Clevenger has hit safely in eight of his last nine in the one-two. Breaking ball in the dirt, smothered by Tejeda. That will even the count. Over those nine games, he's hitting 364, two home runs. And the two-two, down and in, ball three. Goss really Having to work here, a lot of full counts. Already up to 91 pitches here in the fifth. <laughs> Clevenger walked his last time up. The 3 2 runner goes, and it's a line drive back at Goss. He might have gotten leather on it, but it's on into center field for a hit. Up to third goes Garner as Witherspoon gets it back in. But it's now runners at the corners with two away. That'll bring up Josh Bell. The lone RBI of the ball game to this point. A home run onto the lawn in right center field back in the second. Lancaster still leading it 1-0 here in the fifth. Infield and outfield play Bell to pull. And Goss's first pitch. Fastball just missed the outside edge, 1-0. Goss his last time out against Sugarland. Five innings, ten hits, gave up three earned. Walked two and struck out one as Bell swings and misses. Goss delivered a change up and it dipped below the knees. Bell out in front of it. A ball and one strike. Revs will get some action going down in their right field bullpen. Two down in the 1-1. One -one. That one's inside, a slider. And it's two balls and a strike. Goss a deep breath on the mound. First and third for the Barnstormers, but with two away. Goss delivers, and that one's in there. Another change up for a strike. This time, Bell looks it over. The count is even at two and two. The 2-2 pitch, down and in, ball three. Goss missing with the fastball. Tejeda stepping out in front of the plate to return it to Jay Goss on the mound. Flashing two down to his infield. Goss, before this year, just nine professional games, three starts. That was with Tri-City and the Astros organization in 2014. The payoff pitch hit on the ground right side. That's going to get on through for a hit. In to score is Garner. Clevenger going first and third. And coming through with a second RBI is Josh Bell. The full count pull job through the right side. So 
still first and third, still two down for Zawatsky. Left hand swinging shortstop. 0 for 1, he walked his last time up. 2 0, the Barnstormers out in front, two runs on six hits. And the first pitch to Zawatsky hit on the ground to first, picked up by the first baseman Nash. One step to the bag, and that will retire the side. A run across on two hits, and two men left stranded. Halfway home at People's Bank Park, it's Lancaster 2 and York nothing on 1350 WOYK. Did you know that Shipley Energy can take care of all your energy needs? From heating oil and propane to providing your home with electricity and natural gas. We also provide heating and air conditioning service and installation. All of your energy needs are under one roof at Shipley Energy. To learn more, visit ShipleyEnergy.com. Call 855-4-SHIPLEY and don't forget to ask about our $100 rebate. Shipley Energy. Energy for life. Getting pumped for another year of high school football? All this month, Sports Radio 1350 WOIK lays it all out for you in the High School Football Spotlight, presented by Wellspan Sports Medicine. Catch a preview every day in August on Sports Radio 1350 as we break down the teams and the players of the 2017 York Adams League. Or go to WOIK1350.com to access this year's complete lineup of high school football preview. Then, this fall, every Friday night, it's the High School Football Game of the Week, presented by Wellspan Sports Medicine. Only here on Sports Radio 1350. Enter Rudder's Summer of Freedom Sweepstakes today. Look for the entry star. Purchase participating products. Scan your Rudder's Rewards Card or enter VIP information at checkout and automatically be entered to win your choice of a 2017 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport, Ram 1500 Bighorn Quad Cab, or Dodge Challenger RT from Stetler. Drive better, drive Stetler. Free gas for a year and one of thousands of prizes, including Red Bull, Pepsi, and Pennsylvania Lottery scratch-off tickets. Must be a Rudder's VIP to enter. Rudder's, why go any else? This is Ryan Dent. You're listening to York Revolution Baseball on the home of the Revs. Sports Radio 1350. W-O-Y-K. First in York. First in sports. Revs coming to bat here. Home half of the fifth. They trail it 2-0. Ryan Dent, Chase Simpson, Travis Witherspoon, bottom third. Bergeson winds and his first pitch. Fastball catches the outside corner. Dent will look back, but it's 0-1. Two runs, seven hits, no errors for the Barnstormers. No runs, three hits, no errors for York. And the 0-1 just off the plate away this time. One ball and one strike. Dent. A single his first time up, struck it sharply to right center. The 1-1, high fly ball straight away center this time, coming on is Amaral, and he will get there, coming on towards the gap in left center to put it away for out number one. So then retired, and here's Chase Simpson. Chase, the hero from last night. It was Bases loaded, two down in the ninth. And Simpson, in a tie game, lined the game winner. A walk-off down the right field line, scoring Witherspoon, who had pinch run. And the first pitch to Simpson, and that one is just a hair low, 1-0. Simpson up there, batting from the left side, a switch hitter. Taps the outside corner. Bergeson kicks and delivers. That one sails up and away. Two balls and no strikes. Travis Witherspoon and Alonzo Harris to follow. Simpson ready, a slightly open stance, the 2-0. He looks over that one for a strike outside corner. Two and one the count. Revs this weekend have a chance to win War of the Roses. They come in with a record of eight and five against the Barnstormers. Four and two here at the bank. And the two one missed the outside corner, three balls and a strike. 
So if the Revs win two this weekend, they will lock up that title. But more importantly, they are up two games on Lancaster for first place in the Freedom Division. Neither team is led by more than two this entire half. The 3-1 laced down the first baseline foul towards the Revs' bullpen where Jared Gaynor has begun to loosen. Simpson just ahead of that one, and it wasn't just the game winner last night for Simpson. He had a few that were well struck, flew out to the track in right field, also nearly had a three-run home run. He just pulled it foul. Now the count full, three and two with one away. Bergeson peering in for his sign. The righty now ready. He kicks and fires, and Simpson swings and fouls it straight down at the plate to stay alive. Bergeson now in his 12th pro season. Pitched in 10 games for York in 2015 before leaving with that gruesome arm injury that Darrell detailed earlier. Bergeson made his big league debut for the Orioles April 21st of 2009 in a win over the White Sox 10-3. And his rookie season arguably his best in professional baseball. 3-2 on the way to Simpson. That one runs back over, strike three called. A two-seamer started inside, came back over the inside corner. Simpson down on strikes. Two men gone here in the fifth, and the third strikeout victim for Ferguson on the night. That'll bring up Travis Witherspoon. In that rookie season for Ferguson, 11 of his 19 appearances were quality starts. Pitched well, really emerged as a reliable option for the Orioles. But also got injured that season as well. First pitch to Witherspoon, a front door slider over strike one. And had he not gotten hurt, Bergeson would have been right in the mix for rookie of the year. 0-1, the pitch to Witherspoon, line drive, well hit, left center field, that's going to get down, and it will roll towards the wall. Witherspoon turning on the Jets up to second base, he'll pull up there, throw comes back into third, and Witherspoon with the Revs' first extra base hit of the game, a two-out double here in the fifth. Splitting left and center. And he's in scoring position for Alonzo Harris. That injury that Bergeson suffered with the Orioles came on July 30th in that 2015 campaign, or I should say 2009 campaign. And it was Kansas City's Billy Butler lining a ball off of the shin of Bergeson. And he was forced out of the game. First pitch to Harrison, excuse me, swing a pop-up, foul territory, first base side, and just out of the reach of Clevenger, who made his way over towards the first base side, Rev's bullpen. So Bergeson left after being nailed in the shin, collapsed on the field, and that would end his season. He would finish with an ERA of four, or sorry, 3.43 in his rookie year. And the pitch to Harris, hit on the ground, right side, ranging to his glove side, left is Weber. He gets there in time and fires the first, and that will retire the side. A two out double for Travis Witherspoon, but he's left stranded. And after five completed People's Bank Park, it's the Barnstormers two and the Revs nothing on 1350 WOYK. Hey, it's the good-looking genius at Broadway Transmission. You know what really grinds my gears? Perfectly good cars being thrown away just because the transmission went bad. My mind slips into overdrive when someone says, I'll just get a new car before I spend that kind of money on a transmission. What? According to Kelly Blue Book, the average price of a new car is 32 grand. Now you're going to finance that, right? There's another six to eight grand. And if you drive it off the showroom floor, it loses 20% of its value immediately. Don't forget, you also have to pay sales tax, higher insurance rates, title and registration fees, and come up with six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month depending on your interest rates for five years. And remember, you will still have to pay for the upkeep of the car, brakes, tires, wipers, fluids, etc. Stop! 
Trade your transmission, not your car. Thanks, good-looking genius. You're welcome, ma'am. Broadway Transmission. We'll get your ship together and save you all that dough. Visit us on the web at broadwaytrans.com or stop in and see how it's done. Does your wealth advisor know how you take your coffee? At Smith, Mayer, and Little Wealth Advisory Group, we genuinely get to know our clients from their interests, goals, and dreams right down to how they like their coffee. By understanding our clients on a personal level, we help them make wise financial decisions. In us, you will find a trusted confidant dedicated to your financial success. Smith, Mayer, and Little, a wealth of knowledge about wealth. Get to know us over a cup of coffee or visit us at financialjava.com. Jenny Montgomery Scott, LLC. Member NY SC, FINRA, and SIPC. This is Chang Choi, athletic trainer of the York Revolution. You're listening to York Revolution Baseball on the home of the Labs. Sports Radio 1350, WOYK. First in York, first in sports. Back here at People's Bank Park, we head to the sixth. Jared Gaynor comes on for the Revs on a Maple Donuts pitching change. Jay Goss goes five innings, gives up seven hits, two runs, both earned. He walked four and struck out five. And as Gaynor concludes his warm-up tosses, we'll pause for station identification here on Revolution Radio. First in York, first in sports. Your only local sports station. The new Sports Radio 1350. W-O-Y-K, York, Pennsylvania. 8-9-1, and one, due out for the Barnstormers here in the sixth. Anderson, De La Rosa, Tyler Clark, and then Bo Amaral at the top against Jared Gaynor. Gaynor last working in the finale against Sugarland. A hit and earned run, a strikeout in one inning of work. The kick and the first pitch. Two-seamer down and in, ball one. De La Rosa, the K-man tonight, they got him twice. Swinging in the second, looking in the fourth. Gainer, the lefty, ready. And the 1-0, fastball lifted in the air, shallow left center, Witherspoon trots in, camping under it, and waiting. And now reaches up to squeeze for out number one. So De La Rosa retired all three times tonight, and here comes Tyler Clark. Clark a switch hitter, so he'll turn around and hit from the right-hand side against the lefty Gaynor. Gaynor now in his third pro season, signed with the Revs on July 27th. Played a couple years in the American Association after pitching collegiately at George Mason. First pitch, Clark squares, pulls back, and takes a hair low. One ball and no strikes. 2-0 Lancaster, top half of the sixth. Josh Bell has driven in both runs for the Barnstormers, and now Clark dribbles one left of the mound, charging in Simpson. He feels, throws on the run, and he gets Clark at first base by a step. Chase Simpson, a heck of a play defensively, charging and throwing off balance. Two men gone here in the sixth. We've talked about what Simpson did last night offensively, slowly but surely coming along at the plate, but his defense has gotten a lot better as well. 16 straight games without an error at third base for Simpson. And now back to the top of the order and Bo Amaral. Amaral stands in lefty against lefty and Gaynor's first pitch over for strike one. Gaynor making his 10th appearance of the year. He's 1-0 with a 3.24 ERA. Eight and a third innings, 12 hits, four runs, three earned. He's walked three and struck out six. The 0-1 swing and a miss. Big bending, breaking ball down and away. And Amaral swung over the top. <laughs> Bell will take a moment outside the batter's box. One for three. A ground out, a single, and a strikeout. Two down, base is empty, and the 0-2 bounces in. And that got 
quite a bit of Tejeda who stays down for a minute. Fortunately, the base is empty, but the Revs catcher still doing what he instinctively does and throw the body at that pitch in the dirt. One ball and two strikes. Kaner, the lefty, working from the third base side of the rubber. The kick and the pitch. Breaking ball tapped towards first. Telvin Nash fields. He waves off Kaner and takes it to bag unassisted. And for the first time tonight, a Revs pitcher gets the Barnstormers. One, two, three. Five and a half play to People's Bank Park. It's the Stormers two, the Revs nothing on 1350 WOYK. The York County Economic Alliance is York County's primary business resource, representing over 1,100 member businesses and 50,000 employees in York County. The YCEA serves to lead economic growth, connect local businesses, and to create a prosperous York County. This month, the YCEA celebrates the anniversaries of these members. Gladfelder, Anstat Communications, RG Group, RKL, Buchard Horn Incorporated, the York County Economic Alliance. Together, we prosper. Visit YCEA pa-pa.org Boutique Week returns to York for the sixth straight year, kicking off with Fashion Friday on September 1st. The entire week is full of fashion and fun. Events include What the Food Trucks 2017, a luncheon at the Handsome Cab, Boutique Week Progressive Happy Hour with stops at 11 different boutiques which alternate between food and wine. The excitement concludes with York City Boutique Week Fashion Show on September 8th. For more details on all the events and a list of participating boutiques, visit downtownyorkpa.com Can't get enough of the birds? WOYK has you covered. Join us all season on Mondays at 6 for the Baltimore Baseball Show, hosted by award-winning Orioles and national baseball writer Dan Connolly from baltimorebaseball.com Exclusive in-depth interviews plus the latest insight and analysis on the Orioles every week. Talking baseball with the birds, Mondays at 6. The Baltimore Baseball Show on Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. First in York, first in sports. This is Steven Janis. You're listening to York Revolution Baseball on the home of the Revs. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. First in York, first in sports. Bottom of the sixth, Revs coming to bat. Alexi Casilla will start it off. And the first pitch over on the outside edge. 0-1. Barnstormers lead it 2-0. A run in the second, a run in the fifth. Each courtesy of Josh Bell RBIs. Casilla up from the left side. And the pitch is tapped on the ground to the right side. Fielding it is Clevenger. He'll toss to Bergeson covering. And Brad Bergeson fielding his position nicely. Gets there in time for out number one. Reds just four hits in the game. Second base is as far as any runner has gotten tonight. That was Witherspoon last inning. As Tejeda comes to the plate. Bergeson has been especially good against the Revs this year. One and one record, but a 231 ERA coming into play. And certainly bettering that in this outing. Tejeda digs in, righty against righty. Infield back, outfield straight away. First pitch, swing and a miss. Bergeson took something off at 81. Down below the knees to get ahead. Tejeda hit in the first, a line drive to right, and now he watches the pitch down and out of the strike zone. One ball and one strike. Goss out of there, but this matchup between Bergeson and Goss Certainly intriguing. The 1-1 offering on the way. Off the fist, right back, and in between the wickets of Bergeson on the mound. Charging in from short, Zawadzki, the throw to first, is not in time. That one knuckled and snuck under the glove of Bergeson. And it will be an infield hit for Isaias Tejeda. Revs catch a break there. Tejeda aboard a one-out single. But what I started to say about Bergeson and Goss is that the two of them are the only pitchers in the Atlantic League this season 
to rattle off five consecutive victories. Ferguson coming in with nine wins, Goss with eight. He can lose, he cannot win. Ferguson currently is in line for the victory. Michael Burgess now to the plate, one for two. Tejeda, short lead over there at first, being held by Clevenger. As Bergeson comes set, and the first pitch, and that one's over, strike one. Fastball at 88, split the plate in two. Bergeson really working the lower half of the strike zone effectively throughout the night, mixing pitch as well. And he's kept the revs off balance for the most part. The 0-1, swinging a foul straight back. Burgess leaning over the heart of the plate and just missed that one. Straight back to the netting. Burgesson in total in his major league career, a record of 19 and 25, an ERA of 461. In 102 games, 59 of them starts. Burgess waves the bat, 0-2. The kick and the pitch, high and tight with the fastball. Burgess leans back and out of the way. A couple of highlights for Brad Bergeson in his career. He tossed eight shutout innings, June 9th of 2009 with the Orioles. That against Tampa Bay. Threw a two-hitter against Cleveland the following year. Pitch to Burgess, misses down and away, a breaking ball. Now we'll even the count at two and two. And then in 2011, again against the Rays, he threw a four-hit shutout on May 14th. Originally a fourth-round draft pick by the Orioles in 2004. Bergeson sets, two and two. And the pitch to Burgess, swinging a number foul. He just got a piece to stay alive. Bergeson grew up in... Pleasant Town, California. He went to Foothill High School, the same high school as Giant shortstop Brandon Crawford, as well as Barnstormer teammate John Anderson. So that must have been a heck of a baseball team. It was also All State and All American in football at Foothill. Tejeda on it first, one man down, two nothing Barnstormers. A long look in from Bergeson. Two and two. The offering on the way, and that one's high and away. Ball three, and the count runs full. Bergeson has been efficient. Mentioned Goss exited over 90 pitches through five. Bergeson at 76 here in the sixth. Leans in, glove resting on his front left leg. De La Rosa flashing the signs. And now Burgess will step away. Pace starting to slow a little bit here. Burgess back in there, lefty against righty. And now Bergeson says yes. Set up away. And the payoff pitch, swinging a pop up, third base side, and that will drift back and out of play. On the York Mitsubishi out of town scoreboard. Down in Southern Maryland, the Skeeters five, the Blue Crabs three, bottom of the fifth. They're in the bottom of the sixth in New Britain. The Bees leading the Ducks four nothing. And bottom of the fourth in Somerset, it's scoreless between the Patriots and the Bluefish. Right here, it's 2-0 Lancaster. Bottom of the sixth. Tying run at the plate. And Michael Burgess, the payoff pitch, and it's fouled straight back. So Burgess hanging tough. Four foul balls in the at-bat. He's seen eight pitches. Burgess one for two, a ground out. And a single to right. Taps the heart of the plate. And now waves the bat as Bergeson gets his sign. The righty ready. The payoff pitch. Swing a drive. Deep right field towards the line. It's hooking and it is gone. Michael Burgess a two run shot. 
And we are tied at two. Fourteenth home run of the year for Burgess. And that one ties the score. RBIs 56 and 57. And Bergeson gives up his 16th long ball of the year in a big way. Brand new ball game here in the sixth. Here's Telvin Nash. That one down the line just inside the pole and I think it hit the clubhouse on the fly. First pitch to Nash, breaking ball, waved out and missed, 0-1. A line drive home run. It started to hook, but Burgess kept the hands inside and kept it fair. Pitch to Nash. He catches the outside corner to even the count. Or sorry, to get ahead 0-2. Oh Burgess, his last home run came against Sugarland on the 15th as Nash pops one foul down the line and right and out of play. That's Burgess's seventh two-run homer of the year. Eighth home run with a man on base. And it came on the ninth pitch of the at-bat. Nash looking to keep the inning going. Two runs in, one away. An 0-2 count. Burgesson winds and fires, and that one misses down and away. So that'll take Jay Goss off the hook. Gave up two runs in five innings. A one-two pitch. Nash lifts it in the air. Well struck, center field. Amaral going back, turning, looking, gone! Back to back, Jacks for the Revs. And Telvin Nash gives York a three to two lead. home run of the season, 37th of his career, and the Revs jump out in front, it's 3-2. to two. Straight away center field, just right of the batter's eye, which is 4.05 to straight away, Telvin Nash crushed it. Here's Jared Mitchell, three straight hits for the Revs. And time was called as Bergeson started his delivery, but tucked the ball into his glove and just finished with his lower half. Now ready, first pitch to Mitchell, he starts to square, pulls back and takes off the plate away. Telvin Nash extending his hitting streak to eight in a row in a big way. Now nine for his last 31. The 1-0 to Mitchell, swinging a foul back to the screen. Chase Hutchinson beginning to throw for the Revs. Daniel Moskos up and throwing for the Barnstormers. Ferguson trying to get through six. One down and the 1-1. One, one. That one's on the inside corner. He ran it back. And Ferguson ahead, one and two. Ferguson winds in the one-two pitch. Swung and fouled off, off to the left and out of play. So the Revs erasing a two-run deficit. And their biggest comeback against the Barnstormers this season was that suspended game in which they came back on Sunday afternoon and came from behind to win. Mitchell takes it off the plate away to even the count at 2-2. Two two. That game started on 
June 23rd, concluded on June 25th. A lot of twists and turns in the Revs, a 6-5 win. A 2-2, down and away, ball three. And it's now a full count to Jared Mitchell. Mitchell again riding a nine game hitting streak. 29 game home on base streak. And the payoff pitch, swing a foul ball up the first baseline as Mitchell stays alive. And we were talking about how efficient Ferguson had been, well all of a sudden up to 90 pitches. A nine pitch at bat to Michael Burgess. The next pitch to Mitchell will be number seven. The lefty with an open stance, resting the bat on his back left shoulder. The three two, down and in, ball four, and Mitchell keeps it going with a one out walk. And that'll draw a visit from pitching coach Scott Patterson. Again, Daniel Moscos up and throwing. And he just threw a wild one and went through the legs of Polo all the way towards home plate. And I guess that was not Patterson, but Ross Peoples. The two of them look very similar down there. Similar build, stature, mannerisms, but it was Peoples and he will call on Moscos. So Daniel Moscos, the left-hander coming on, and he will face Ryan Dent. Runner at first, three runs in. The Revs leading it three to two, and on the Maple Donuts pitching change, we will step aside. Three to two, the Revs in front, looking for more on 1350 W-O-Y-K. And music, and fun. That's why York Revolution games, concerts, youth sports, special events, and more happen at a place called People's Bank Park. People's Bank has been serving your county for more than 150 years. Always cheering, always celebrating, always committed to the things that make York County great. And to you having a great time at People's Bank Park. People's Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. The York Revolution are making a playoff push and they need your help. Come out to People's Bank Park on September 16th when the Revs host the rival Lancaster Barnstormers and spin to win. That's right, the WOYK prize wheel returns with great local sponsors like your neighborhood SureSave Markets. For tickets, visit YorkRevolution.com, the Apple Chevrolet ticket office, or call 717-801-HITS. Again, that's the spin to win prize wheel, September 16th at People's Bank Park. York Mitsubishi Super Summer Sales Event is on. Featuring Outlander Sports starting at 18. 735 or 0% financing available for up to 72 months. Right now, $2,500 off all 2017 Mitsubishi Lancer or the 2017 Outlander with standard seven passenger seating and discounts rebates up to $4,000. York Mitsubishi Super Summer Sales Event with a great selection and over 70 cars available. York Mitsubishi just off Route 30 and Roosevelt Avenue in York, where Mitsubishi's always cost less. Sale ends 831. Hi, this is United States Olympian Haley Flickner. You're listening to Sports Radio. 1350 W-O-Y-K First in New York, first in sports Well, Moscow's had been warming but they elect to go with the right-hander R.J. Hively to face Ryan Dent One gone, three runs in Jared Mitchell just walked He's on at first the Revs leading it 3-2 and looking for more. Dent, one for two, a single to right center in the first, a fly out to center in the fourth. Hively from the stretch and the first pitch, fastball out of edge, 0-1. RJ Hively making his 46th appearance on the season. He's 4-0, his ERA 489. 49 and two-thirds innings worked, 51 hits, 31 runs, 27 earned. Walked 16, but struck out 61. Really incredible strikeout to walk ratio there. Power righty. Middle of the infield looks to turn two for the Barnstormers. 
Ively sets the setup inside and the pitch to Dent. Ground ball through the hole, left side, base hit. Mitchell up to second, he'll hang on there. The Revs now with four hits in the inning and five straight have reached. Now they weren't going anywhere, Matt, for five and a third and it all started with Tejeda's bleeder and then Burgess had the at bat of the night and that just changed everything. Your third baseman, number seven. Certainly wore down Burgess in, got a pitch he could hammer and then maybe a frustration pitch to Nash following that. And then it was as if he ran out of gas in the Mitchell at bat. Chase Simpson looks to keep it going. Two on, one away. Simpson up there from the left side. A look back at Mitchell. And now Hively to the plate. Fastball outside. It had some arm side run that brought it all the way into the third base side batter's box. One ball and no strikes. Simpson 0 for 2, a fly out to center field. Went down on strikes, looking his last time up. They play him a shade to pull. Ively will look back. A long hold, and now steps away. Ively last worked yesterday against Southern Maryland. A scoreless inning, he struck out one. And now a ball loose down from the Revs bullpen all the way to home plate. And Simpson will deaden it with his bat. <laughs> Ively this season has stranded 12 of his 22 inherited runners. Mitchell is the responsibility of Bergeson. Dent is Hively's responsibility. First and second, one man down. Revs lead it 3-2, to two, home half of the sixth. Hively kicks and fires, and Chase turns on one and rips it foul. Up the first base side towards the Revs' bullpen. And down near the end of the Revs' dugout, it's Telvin Nash pointing, hit it that way. Simpson will look to straighten it out. Take a moment to himself outside the first base side batter's box. Now climbing his way back in. Two runs, seven hits, no errors for the Barnstormers. Three runs, eight hits, no errors for the Revs. Hively looks back and now spins and no throw. No one covering Mitchell back in standing. Ively really taking his time. Works from the center of the rubber. Come set at the letters and the 1-1. Swing a ground ball towards second base. It could be two. The flip to one. Zawatsky to first. It's an inning ending. 4-6-3. Double play. But a big inning for the Revs. They strike for four hits and three runs. They take the lead on back-to-back -back jacks from Burgess and Nash. And after six complete at People's Bank Park, it's the Revs three, the Barnstormers two, heading to the seventh. Daryl Henry will take you home when we come back on 1350 WOYK. Sports injury? Walk into Wellspan Urgent Orthopedics for immediate care. No appointment is ever needed. Our orthopedic and sports medicine specialists are here to treat you. Visit wellspan.org forward slash urgent orthopedics today for hours at our York and Hanover locations. Getting pumped for another year of high school football? All this month, Sports Radio 1350 WOIK lays it all out for you in the High School Football Spotlight, presented by Wellspan Sports Medicine. Catch a preview every day in August on Sports Radio 1350 as we break down the teams and the players of the 2017 York Adams League. Or go to WOIK1350.com to access this year's complete lineup of high school football previews. Then, this fall, every Friday night, it's the High School Football Game of the Week, presented by Wellspan Sports Medicine. Only here on Sports Radio 1350. At the York County Solid Waste Authority, we know just one quart of motor oil can contaminate one million gallons of water. Recycle your motor oil at locations throughout York County. 
Visit www.ycswa.com for locations. Garbage is power. Hear that? It's the sound of summer. Sound nice? Call Kona Ice. We do it all. Schools, sporting events, parties, both corporate and birthday. You name it, we'll be there. We bring the party to you. If you need a little bit of fun in your life, we're the shaved ice truck for you. Oh, and we fundraise too. This summer, cool down with Kona Ice. Give us a call at 1-800-KONA-ICE or visit us online at www.kona-ice.com. Kona Ice, flavor our world. Hi, this is Brandy Portanova, charitable giving coordinator at Gladfelter, proud member of the York County Economic Alliance since 1955. You are listening to Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. First in York, first in sports. Well, what an exciting sixth inning that was. And the Revs with the back-to-back home run outburst have gone in front. Joe Van Meter takes over. Pitching change brought to you by Maple Donuts. 2-3-4 up. And the first pitch to Garrett Weber is over for a strike. 3-2 York as we start the seventh. Van Meter, two scoreless innings last night. Mace thought he would be available again tonight. He indeed is. And the 0-1. Swing and a miss, a change up, diving. It'll be Weber, Garner, and Halton. Big boppers. Here do in this seventh inning. Here's the 0-2, and it's just outside. Van Meter started to walk off the mound, but it has not been a spacious zone here tonight. Weber two for three. Pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Came back with a changeup. And fans Weber for out number one. Revs baseball brought to you by Wolf's Bus Lines, the Pretzel Twist, Neighborhood Sure Save Markets, Turkey Hill Minute Markets, Etline Foods, and D's Nuts. Here's Cole Garner, who's 0 for 2 with a walk and a run. Former Lancaster team MVP from three years ago. First pitch, swing and a high fly in right. Mitchell moving back toward the corner, eyeing it up on the track, has room, catches made, two down. A towering fly down the line in right. And Mitchell in the corner, looked like he had it all the way. He was right there. Garner's one of those guys, though, that's so strong when he hits it, you wonder how far is it going to carry. The two quick outs. Here's Sean Halton, who's 0 for 2 with a walk. It was in the third inning that Alonzo Harris made a diving play on him, preventing a run to end that inning. First pitch. Swing and a miss. A fastball that he airs out on. Revs up 3-2 here in the top of the seventh. Van Meter stares in, comes set. The 0-1, fastball right in there. Strike two called. He's throwing darts again tonight. Trying to send it to the stretch. The Revs will... Shift the outfield the other way, even more so now with two strikes. Playing him hard to the opposite field. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss! He struck him out! A fastball from Van Meter. It took nine pitches. And he works a 1-2-3-7 with two punch outs right through the heart of the order. Stretch time here at the bank. The Revs in front, 3-2. to two. Money and business are essential to the strength of a community. So is cheering and celebration and music and fun. That's why York Revolution Games, concerts, youth sports, special events, and more happen at a place called People's Bank Park. 
People's Bank has been serving your county for more than 150 years. Always cheering, always celebrating, always committed to the things that make your county great. And to you having a great time at People's Bank Park. People's Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. The York County Economic Alliance is York County's primary business resource, representing over 1,100 member businesses and 50,000 employees in York County. The YCEA serves to lead economic growth, connect local businesses, and to create a prosperous York County. This month, the YCEA celebrates the anniversaries of these members. Gladfelder, Anstat Communications, RG Group, RKL, Bucard Horn Incorporated. The York County Economic Alliance. Together we prosper. Visit YCEA pa-pa.org This is Dustin Hawkinson with the Keystone Sports Network. For the best Penn State football analysis and commentary, listen to Sports Radio 1350 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 8 a.m. and after Revs games for the Keystone Kickoff Show. We'll bring you game reviews, player evaluations, and recruiting news. So for the best in Penn State talk, tune to Sports Radio 1350 WOYK for the Keystone Kickoff Show. Brought to you locally by your neighborhood SureSave Markets. Hi, this is United States Olympic gold medalist Jenny Finch. You're listening to York Revolution Baseball on Sports Radio 1350. W-O-Y-K. First in York, first in sports. I said a nine pitch inning for Van Meter. It was only eight. And that follows an eight-pitch inning from Jared Gaynor, back-to-back in the sixth and seventh, respectively. Revs with a 3-2 lead. Stretch time here at People's Bank Park. Righty, Kaoi Downing is the new pitcher for Lancaster. Pitching change brought to you by Maple Donuts. Seen him a ton in the season series, it seems, at least. And he's been in 44 games overall, 2-0 and with a 3.40 ERA. And he'll take time to tie his shoe before facing Travis Witherspoon, who will lead it off. Harrison Casilla to follow the Revs up a run. They've been shut out 2-0 until the outburst last inning. Witherspoon a walk and a double tonight. And he digs in Downing, who's just 5'11". Righty from the stretch, comes home and misses high. Bell is up at the edge of the grass at third base with Witherspoon's speed. Now set, the 1-0, and that missed upstairs. Revs three runs, eight hits, no errors. Lancaster two, seven, and zero. An electrifying sixth inning with back-to-back home runs. This place was jumping, the 2-0. And it missed up high. The Witherspoon trying to get on to start the inning. It was a little sleepy and Burgess Woke them up, and then Nash with that bomb. They were going nuts. The 3-0. Up high, four-pitch walk to start the bottom of the seven. Now Witherspoon, who was caught stealing earlier tonight. We'll see what they might try here. Alonzo Harris to the plate. Revs Baseball brought to you by Image 360, Yingling's Ice Cream, Highmark, Isaacs, Sheets, Ace Distributing, and Stamball Plumbing and Heating. Revs have Ricardo Gomez up, getting ready for the eighth. Zoe tonight 0 for 3, Bell again at the edge at third. And the pitch, it's slider, and Downing throws his first strike. Lancaster with lefty Daniel Moskus up in their bullpen. Already, here's the 0-1. 
And it misses upstairs. So now five of his first six have missed. Downing from Honolulu, Hawaii. That's where he was born, now lives in San Diego. The stretch, the 1-1, one -one. swing and a high pop-up. And, oh man, did that hit the bird? Bell at third, halfway down the line, squeezes it with his left foot in fair territory. It is a fair ball and the catch is made. The bird, right as the ball came up, was either startled and it flew by or adjusted its, its course or the ball might have actually barely made contact with it and uh, that made the crowd react with the, an ooh and an ah. De La Rosa over toward his dugout. He's going to get rid of the batting glove under his catcher's mitt and maybe something amiss. I can't imagine he would go without the batting glove, but something that they're adjusting. On our Wellspan Sports Medicine Injury Report, the Revs with Carlos Trienfeld needing a couple of more days with the wrist strain. Luke Westfall inactive today, and he'll throw this weekend. He had some soreness. Hope to have him back in there here in a couple of days. And for Lancaster, Lastings Millage recently lost with a broken thumb. They've had a couple of guys banged up, including Nate Coronado, who we've yet to see, Trayvon Robinson, both out of the lineup tonight. And I guess we'll just take as long as needed to get this straightened out. Still over there by the Lancaster dugout tending to whatever was bothering his glove hand. Now makes his way back to the plate, tugging the batting glove back on. Maybe some wrist tape loose. A, a thumb guard would be over the batting glove, so it wouldn't be that. Alexi Casilla, the hitter, one on, one out. He is 0 for 3 tonight. Downing stretches, delivers, and a swing and a line drive. Base hit right field. Witherspoon at second. He'll have to hit the brakes. Garner on it in shallow right. Throws a one-hop strike to third, but Casilla in the hit column. First pitch swinging. And it's first and second for Tejeda. On deck is Burgess. They have Moskus, the lefty, presumably getting ready for him. Downing will face one more in Tejeda, trying to give the Revs a little breathing room. Up 3-2 here in the bottom of the seventh. Two-game lead coming in tonight over Lancaster. It's the biggest series between these two since the first half closing series in 2014 when the Revs needed one win in Lancaster, got it the second night. Here's Tejeda, stretch, first pitch, and in the dirt, picked cleanly by De La Rosa. Tejeda two for three in the game. He had the infield hit past Bergeson that ignited the three-run outburst last inning. Got the infield hit with one out to start it. Now Downing nods yes, he's ready. And the 1-0. Swing and a fly ball, left center field. Sends Amaral back, and he will have room. Makes the catch in front of the track. Witherspoon tags and heads to third. He was going back, and it looked like he was starting to look toward left center, like he didn't have a play on it, but then he turned around, and he clearly did. A couple steps short of the track. He faked everybody out. 
there for an instant. It'll be first and third with two down for Michael Burgess, and here comes Ross Peoples. Now he'll face the lefty Moskus. Pitching change brought to you by Maple Donuts. 3-2, the Revs lead it with first and third, two outs. In the bottom of the seventh, Burgess at the plate when we come back. Enter Rudder's Summer of Freedom sweepstakes today. Look for the entry star, purchase participating products, scan your Rudder's rewards card, or enter VIP information at checkout and automatically be entered to win your choice of a 2017 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport, Ram 1500 Bighorn Quad Cab, or Dodge Challenger RT from Stetler. Drive better, drive Stetler. Free gas for a year and one of thousands of prizes, including Red Bull, Pepsi, and Pennsylvania Lottery scratch-off tickets. Must be a Rudder's VIP to enter. Rudder's, why go anywhere? Else. Mid Atlantic Industrial Equipment offers quality material handling equipment and services. Along with a full line of unicarriers and Komatsu forklifts, you'll find Genie Aerial Lifts, IPC Eagle Floor Scrubbers, and Penalift Loading Dock Equipment. Mid Atlantic can provide rentals, pre owned equipment, service, and replacement parts for most makes. When you need the best for your business, call Mid Atlantic Industrial Equipment at 888 383 Lift. That's 888 383 5438 or online at MidAtlanticIndustrial.com. Columbia Gas of Pennsylvania delivers natural gas to 423,000 customers. Our commitment is to do it reliably, efficiently, and most importantly, safely. If you smell, hear, or see any sign of a natural gas problem, evacuate immediately and call 911 from a safe location. The most obvious indication of a problem in your home would be a rotten egg odor. For more information on natural gas safety, visit ColumbiaGasPA.com. Columbia Gas of Pennsylvania reminding you about natural gas safety. This is Hall of Famer Jim Palmer. You're listening to York Revolution Baseball on Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. First in York, first in sports. a 3-2 lead. The lefty Moskis brought in to match up with Burgess who tied the game last inning. Cranked a line shot. Two run homer inside the pole in right. Right into the picnic area. Two for three in the game. Home run is 14. And it's first and third for him here with two outs trying to add to the lead. And Moskis, the stretch, first pitch, fastball in tight, 92 miles an hour. Moskis, former first rounder and big leaguer with the Pirates, he's got good stuff. Nasty from the left hand side. Five and two with a 280 ERA for the year, 50th game. Ready and the 1-0, fastball just inside. He's got a little hitch on the leg lift with his hands. Lefties against Moskis hitting 226, righties actually lower, 202. Now he's ready. The Stretch and the 2-0, down and away, a slider. Well, if he doesn't get Burgess, who he was brought into face, Talvin Nash is waiting on deck. Witherspoon at third, had led off with a walk. Casilla at first, singled. There's the stretch from Moskus, 3-0. And right down the middle, strike called. Well, no one's up and throwing for the Barnstormers down there in their left field bullpen, so it appears that regardless what happens with Burgess, he will still be left in to face Nash. Attendance tonight, 3,459. Looking for an insurance run. The 3-1. And a swing and a bouncer to first, just fair. Clavenger in front of the bag, gloves it. 
steps in the bag to end the inning. Now the Revs leave them at the corners. No runs, one hit. Two men left. They will settle for the existing one-run lead as this game moves to the eighth. It's York three, Lancaster two. You trust AAA to work at every mile. But AAA doesn't just cover your car. They can also cover your home. AAA Home Insurance protects every square foot. And when you add AAA Home Insurance to AAA Auto Insurance, you get more protection and more savings. Insurance that's not just insurance. Talk to your local AAA insurance agent today or visit AAA.com to learn more about AAA Home Insurance. Okay, here we go, people. This is The Herd. Where are you again? With Colin Cowherd. There's so many injuries. So, so instead of Carrie Underwood doing everyone. a breeze in, in Tony but Romo AAA promo, which is what you know they're trying call. to do every week, they NBC has cut home. several new authentic, AAA brutally frank promos. It's not a, it's not much of a sales job by NBC, but we got our hands on them. And they're as honest as anything I've ever heard out of NBC. Insurance that's not just insurance. Whoa! NBC fires a shot at me. That is brutal. Colin Cowherd. Weekdays at 3 on Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Head of the eighth, brought to you by York Dental Sleep Therapy. Revs a 3-2 lead. Ricardo Gomez is in. First pitch to Steve Clevenger. He pumps a fastball over for a strike. Rami Lewis coaching at first. Somebody in the Revs dugout threw water at him as he <laughs> took his spot down there. First time tonight. The 0-1. And he skips it past Tejeda's backhand stab. Clevenger... One for two, single walk, stole a base early in the game. Left-hand hitter batting fifth for them tonight. Bell and Zawadski will follow. Gomez is set, the 1-1. And he's swinging a rip right side, base hit. Hit the lip of the outfield grass, ricocheted up, and on through. The Clevenger with his second hit, and the tying run is on. And here comes Josh Bell, who's driven in both of their runs tonight. Two for three, a home run in the second inning, and then an RBI single in the fifth inning. Pitching change brought to you by Maple Donuts. Gomez facing his first Atlantic League team. He's with Lancaster and... 08 and 09, first pitch is inside a slider. He's 3-3, three and three, 32 outings, 360 ERA for the year. Was last in Wednesday night, two singles and a walk, but left the bases loaded against Somerset. Pitch and a late swing, and he sends a foul upstairs on the third base side. Bell earlier tonight, his third home run this season, second in this park. Nash holds Clevenger, the 1-1, and a swing and a high fly toward the corner and right. Mitchell moving over and feeling for the wall into foul territory. He made the catch, fires it in, it's one out. Hidden from our view, he must have had just enough room, and he made the grab all the way into the corner right against the wall and fired it in, keeping Clevenger at first base. Wow. <laughs> Couldn't see him. I honestly thought that had home run distance on it, but he had just pulled it foul. 
Just kind of waiting for it to hit that upper deck there on the home run patio and disappeared down and Mitchell, I guess, reeled it in. I think some hearts stopped when that ball left the bat. Certainly had the height. One down, here's Lance Zawadzki. First pitch, a swing and a comebacker. Gomez throws to second, dent to first, double play! 1-6-3, and Gomez sets down the side in order in the top of the eighth. No runs, one hit, nobody left. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. York three, Lancaster two. Kids today, with Facebook, texting, TV, and video games, seems like fresh air and sunshine are things of the past. Remember playing catch, climbing trees, wholesome backyard fun? Heritage Lawn and Landscape Care remembers. Give them lush grass, healthy trees, the good old outdoors. American is baseball and apple pie. Kids have every reason to stay inside. Don't let your lawn be one of them. Heritage Lawn and Landscape Care. World-class care right in your backyard. 717-292-9994. You'll always hit it out of the park with great Best Yet products from your neighborhood SureSave stores. Like party platters with 1893 deli items. Team up Best Yet hot dogs with Best Yet kettle cooked chips. And get Best Yet 12 packs of soda and Best Yet rising crust pizzas at Sobel's Markets in Shrewsbury, Stewartstown, Whiteford, and East York. And at Nell's Market Fresh Foods in Spry. Money and business are essential to the strength of a community. So is cheering and celebration and music and fun. That's why York Revolution games, concerts, youth sports, special events and more happen at a place called People's Bank Park. People's Bank has been serving York County for more than 150 years. Always cheering, always celebrating, always committed to the things that make York County great. And to you having a great time at People's Bank Park. People's Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Hi, this is Enoe Polanco, and you're listening to Your Revolution Baseball on the home of the Revolution, Sport Radio 1350 WOYK. Head to the bottom of the eighth, Revs with a 3 2 lead. And after Gaynor needed eight pitches in the sixth, Van Meter eight in the seventh, Gomez needed just seven in the top of the eighth. Talvin Nash coming up for York to lead off with a one-run lead. Are you tired of feeling the effects of sleep apnea or sleepless nights due to your CPAP? Dr. Bell may have an option to help you. Make your appointment today and let Dr. Bell help determine which treatment is best for your needs. Call 316-1299 or visit YorkSleep.com. Nash one for three tonight. The one a huge one. Gave him the lead. Some 400 plus feet to dead center and a slider down and in from Moskis who stays in. Facing at least Nash and then the lefty Mitchell. Dent is due to follow him. Nash's home run is ninth in 26 games. Still an RBI per game. 37th home run of his Revs career. Is the 1 0 and a swing and a foul way up and back. Broke a tie for eighth in Revs history with Ramon Castro. He's now eighth all by himself. In the ninth, Lancaster will have eight, nine, and one. De La Rosa, Clark, and Amaral. And I assume it's Brad Allen who's up. It is. Here's the stretch. And the 1-1. Swing and a towering drive. Deep left field. Halton is back at the fence. And he's got room. Man, how did that not go? Nash can't believe it either. A towering moonshot to left. And Halton started straight back. I'm waiting for him to turn and look up, and he actually came in a step and caught it right on the edge of the track. That thing just didn't go. 
Certainly looked good off the bat. I thought it was gone. Must have just gotten it off the end. Yeah. Here's Jared Mitchell. Well, the one that he hit to straightaway center was not off the end. It must have just missed this one. Pitch to Mitchell is inside. He is 0 for 2 tonight with a walk. Looks like Moskus will have the entire inning. Nobody up behind him. The 1-0, high and tight as Mitchell bends back. Moskus was the fourth overall pick of the Pirates in 07 out of Clemson. Made it to the big leagues for 31 games in relief in 2011. A 296 ERA. Big league level. Now ready, the 2-0. And that's up and it, it got the umpire. De La Rosa missed it and it hit Frank Urilli right in the right hand. And that hurt. Chong coming out to check on him. It looked like it caught part of the leather but slipped out of the glove of De La Rosa and there's no way to react to that if you're Frank Urilli on one that's certainly tailing to one side or another. You can kind of cheat out of the way but when it's one that you would expect the catcher to catch, you don't really make any movement. Whatever leather it caught certainly didn't take a whole lot off the sting. Yeah, you can see him start to crouch down in pain and then swing that hand around trying to shake it off. And Chong out for a quick look. Frank will tough it out. The 3-0. And a little bit high. Mitchell walks on four pitches. And now Moskis <laughs> has the nerve to ask where that was after he really got drilled in the fist. Nobody will feel worse about it than De La Rosa, who missed. Here's Ryan Dent, who's two for three. Three-two lead for York here in the bottom of the eighth. Dent in there, waggles the bat back and forth. And the first pitch misses high and away. Moskis was called up to the majors when right-hander Evan Meek went on the DL in 2011 for Pittsburgh, and Meek would end up being Moskis' teammate with Lancaster last season. And he also pitched in Somerset last year. 1-0, and that's down and away. The hitters count for Dent, and Moskis has missed with six in a row. After Nash just missed taking him deep. Alrighty, the 2-0, runner goes, it's down low. De La Rosa can't get the throw off. He had to reach down low, reached in to pull it out. And it slipped out of his hand, no throw. Jared Mitchell with his 15th steal. And he does it against a left-hand pitcher. And De La Rosa, who's been a fantastic thrower. Well, Mace has been trying to encourage Jared Mitchell to steal a bit more recently, and that's a big one there. Runner in scoring position now. 3-0 to Dent, way outside. Eight in a row have missed. Ball four. Barnstormers now with righty Scott Schumann up. And Chase Simpson coming to the plate. We'll pause for station identification. This is Revolution Radio. First in York, first in sports. Your only local sports station. The new Sports Radio 1350. WOYK, York, Pennsylvania. Scott Patterson making a visit here, buying some time for Schumann. The Revs with a 3-2 lead here in the bottom of the eighth. 
And Simpson, who was the walk-off hero last night, will look to add to the lead. He'll be batting from the right against Moskis. Hasn't had a chance to face a lot of lefties since coming to York, but he will do so here. Revs tonight trying to tie a season high for a winning streak and go to three games up. Lancaster needs to win five of the final six to hold the cup. Four of the final six to overtake York for the second half tiebreaker head to head. A win in the opener here would be mighty big for the Revs. Would also ensure that worst case they would still be in first at the end of the weekend. Pitch to Simpson, swing and a miss, a changeup. Tomorrow night it'll be Victor Mateo against lefty Tommy Shirley. Then on Sunday at 1 o'clock, Frank Gailey against Rami Lewis. Simpson 0 for 3 tonight. Trying to cash in on a couple of walks here in the 8th. Is the 0 1 swing and a foul tip to the backstop? Our York Mitsubishi out of town scoreboard Sugarland up 7 3 at Southern Maryland in the bottom of the eighth. Bridgeport and Somerset scoreless in the sixth. New Britain at home leads Long Island 5 3. And that game in the ninth. Here it's 3 2 York, bottom of the eighth. The stretch from Moskis. And the 0-2. Missed way up high. Snap throw to first and just back is Dent. Clevenger came scooting in from way back. A play that they had on. And Dent thought he was safe to get a big secondary lead. Just got back in. Witherspoon on deck. Perhaps we'd see Schumann at that point. Downtown down there leading the clap. The one two and it misses high and away again. Mosk is up to 20 pitches since coming in. Stares in, nods yes. Ready with the 2-2. Breaking ball inside, good eye from Simpson. Laid off a slider barreling in on him. A full count after back-to-back -back walks. Simpson's gone from 0-2 to 3-2. Moskis, who's also played in Taiwan and Mexico since his big league time. Now ready. Look back at second base, the 3-2. Swing a ground ball toward the middle, diving, and it's past Sawatsky and short. Into center, Mitchell around, he's gonna score. Chase Simpson with an RBI single, and the Revs with a big insurance run lead it four to two here in the eighth. Yeah. One and a bat that was, 0 and two to three and two, and he hit it sharply. If Zawadzki was a little more up the middle, it's a double play, but he had to dive, it got under him, and into center. Another night, another big RBI for Chase. And that's it for Moskis. Frank, you're really hearing it from 
the Barnstormer dugout and Moskis jawing at him and pointing at him on his way off. Scott Patterson initially was chirping while Ross Peoples was out doing the pitching change. And Frank now saying, no more, you're going to be gone. Telling him to go sit down. And now Ross wants to know what's going on. Now the Revs with a 4-2 lead, four unanswered. And after the two walks, Simpson the big RBI hit. A 3-2 pitch, a borderline pitch. He went down and got it. Nice job just putting it in play, shot it right back up the middle. And with regard to the conversation about the strike zone, I think it was consistent all night. It wasn't big. It was certainly smaller than usual, but I don't think it really was one-sided in either direction. Now Mitchell scoring all the way from second. Dent at second, first and second for Travis Witherspoon once Schumann is ready. He appears in his 52nd game, 3-0 at 268 ERA and one save. Fifth in the league in appearances and he's been scoreless in all but nine. 42 of his 51, he has not allowed a run. The Revs have Another huge night here tomorrow night. Great weather expected again all weekend. Tomorrow night at 6.30. We'll post-game fireworks. It's youth football night. Appearance by Jacoby Jones. Post-game fireworks presented by Gingrich Landscaping and Excavating. Fidget spinner giveaway to the first 1,000. And also bike night presented by First Capital Harley-Davidson. Sunday at 1, hat giveaway presented by Stambaugh Plumbing and Heating. Candyland Day, Giant Candy Drop, and the York City Little League Chopper Drop presented by People's Bank. Tickets on sale, yorkrevolution.com, 717-801-HITS. And at the Apple Chevrolet ticket office. Schumann ready to go. Witherspoon's had a good night. Two walks and a double. And we'll try to extend the lead even further. 4-2 here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Dent at second, Simpson at first. He's got to be feeling better and better at the plate. Another big hit for him. Pitch to Witherspoon, it's outside. 94 from Schumann, who's got big arm action, leans back. Looks pretty max effort, judging from the first delivery. Now ready. And the 1-0. It misses down and in, a slider. Now Witherspoon with a hitter's count, and the Barnstormers have gotten themselves into huge trouble this inning with balls. It's 2-0 here on Spoon. And Schumann ready. Pitch. Swing and a high fly ball left field. Halton moving back on this. Onto the track, and he's going to have room again. Comes in a step. Just in front of the warning track, and another narrow miss. Talvin Nash, who just missed to start the inning. Witherspoon just got under one that would have blown this game wide open. And we talked about it a little bit last night, Darrell. The cooler air these past few nights, summer winding to a close, and about a month ago, it seemed like everything was carrying out, not so much this week. A two down for Alonzo Harris. 4-2 the lead as Allen is ready, waiting for the nine. Pitch to Harris, a check swing on a slider low, appeal to first, he held off. Kind of shuffling up with the feed as he sort of danced himself to a stop there. He's 0 for 4 tonight, that's been rare, especially here at People's Bank Park where he has lit it up. Schumann ready, the 
1-0. And a swing and a high fly ball right center field. This one carrying back, but Garner is under it from right. And in deep right center, he'll make the grab. Three deep flyouts in the inning. And Harris just got under it. But the Revs add one run on one hit. They strand two, and we're going to the ninth. It's York four, Lancaster two. Hear that? It's the sound of summer. Sound nice? Call Kona Ice. We do it all. Schools, sporting events, parties, both corporate and birthday. You name it, we'll be there. We bring the party to you. If you need a little bit of fun in your life, we're the shaved ice truck for you. Oh, and we fundraise too. This summer, cool down with Kona Ice. Give us a call at 1-800-KONA-ICE or visit us online at www.kona-ice.com. Kona Ice, flavor our world. Runners know the challenge. It's not the uncompromising weather. It's not the pounding repetition. It's not knowing how to dig deep as you start the climb of that last hill. For runners, the challenge is the discipline to keep running. Flying feet. Casual runners, amateur runners, hardcore runners, no matter what level runner you are, Flying Feet Sports Shoes is with you every step of the way. Flying Feet has become the leader in athletic footwear and properly fitting the feet of runners throughout Central PA. Flying Feet has become the leader in athletic footwear, properly fitting the feet of runners throughout Central PA. And that holds true whether you're training or racing on roads, tracks, or trails. For those searching for that discipline, Flying Feet provides the latest shoe innovations, the accessories and equipment, and the inspiration to keep on running. Greg Baum and his staff have the knowledge and the true understanding of what running is all about. As one local runner put it, Flying Feet is family and all runners are welcome. Flying Feet. <laughs> Flying Feet Sports Shoes, 1511 Mount Rose Avenue, York, just off exit 18 of I-83. This is TJ Oshie of the Washington Capitals. Catch the Caps all season right here on Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. First in York, first in sports. <laughs> the ninth inning. Brad Allen ready to go. The Revs with a 4-2 lead trying to take game one of a critical three-game weekend. Coming in with a two-game lead for first. It'll be De La Rosa, Clark, and Amaral 8-9 and 1 in the order here in the top of the ninth for Lancaster. Pitching change brought to you by Maple Donuts. Allen 1-3, 266 CRA in 50 games, 19 saves, the fourth most in the league and fourth most in a season in Rebs histories. Trying to become the fourth to get to 20 in a season in Rebs history. De La Rosa, two strikeouts and a flyout tonight. And Allen winds his first pitch. It's a fastball for a strike. Nothing and one. Now the wind and the 0-1. Swing and a foul back against the netting. Revs were down 2-0 until Michael Burgess slammed a game-tying homer in the sixth and Talvin Nash followed going back to back. Simpson, the insurance, Ribby in the eighth. Here's the 0-2, and a slider down low. Really good chase pitch there, though, from Allen. Dropped straight through the zone. Taylor Rosa started the hands, but able to hold back. Allen peers in. He's got it. Here's the kick, the 1-2, and a swing and a pop foul. That'll get back and out of play. Allen last in on Wednesday night, allowed three singles and a walk, but left the bases loaded, not allowing a run. He deals, swinging a bouncer off the plate. Allen hustles in, he's got it, plants, fires in time, one away. Allen hustling in off the mound toward the third base side on a high chop off the plate. Had to wait for it to come down, he played the bounce. Dug his cleats in and made the throw. Really patient play there from Allen. He could have tried to barehand it in the air instead. Let him get his, his feet underneath of it, set himself, played it on the hop, and then fired a strike to first. Knew he had the catcher running. 
Here's Tyler Clark. First pitch, a swing and a miss, a changeup. He's one for three tonight. Nash near the line at first base. With the switch hitting Clark at bat, batting left-handed. The 0-1, and a slider right in there, strike two. Allen quickly ahead. Clark will back out and collect his thoughts. Allen peers in, ready, the 0-2. Fastball right down the middle, strike three called. Two up, two down here in the top of the ninth. And the Revs an out away from a three game lead. And he will face Bo Amaral at the top of the order. The Revs also looking to ensure that the month of August is their winningest of the season. They went 15 and 11 in July, 15 and 8 in August coming in tonight. Here's Amaral, who's one for four. Allen the pitch, and a swing and a looper out towards second. Casilla out, and it will drop in a blue pit. Amaral serves a bloop into shallow center. And then it'll bring Garrett Weber to the plate as the tying run. First pitch, just reaching out and floating it. Yeah, here's Weber, who's two for four on the night. He's got 12 home runs. He had the six home run week that got them to the first half tie break game, essentially. First pitch, it's down low. Revs with a 4-2 lead here with two outs in the top of the ninth. And after Weber, you've got Cole Garner on deck. Would rather not go that far. Here's the stretch, the 1-0. And a swing and a foul tip into the mitt. A slider from Allen, that evens things up. One and one. That one really darting. On the stretch, 1-1 one, one pitch, fastball low. Allen taking a moment off the rubber there. I think he overthrew that last one a little bit, amped up. Try to rear back for a little extra. Now ready, the 2-1. Oh, in the dirt, ricocheted off to Tejeda's face mask on the bounce. Amaral get to second. As Tejeda tracks it down over by the first base on deck circle. Late bite on that one ends up a wild pitch. Now the force play taken away. It's three and one. Cole Garner lurking on deck. Allen's last save was Saturday night at Sugarland. Stares in and time asked for by Tejeda. Staring and steps off. The sign's a little more complex with a runner at second base. Now he's set. The 3 1. Swing and a miss. He chased ball four. Off speed, down and away. And Allen a strike away. A full count with two outs in the nine. When he's shown in this at bat, he can throw that slider in any spot. Threw it 1-0, and oh, threw it in the dirt 1-0, and, oh, and threw it in the dirt 3-1. and one. Uh, Swing and a miss both times. See if he comes right back to it with a full count. He's ready. The payoff pitch. Swing and he fouls it away. Fights it off down the first base side, right over the seats. Now we'll do it again. Slider again, right? It looked like it was, but it looked like he aimed it a little more that time. Front door instead of down and away. And again, it, it takes a lot of guts, a lot of trust in the hitter to commit if you're going to bury it. 
with three balls. Don't want to put the tying run on base. Again ready, another payoff pitch, and he missed down low, a change up on three and two. A walk to Weber, and the tying run is on, and Cole Garner will come to the plate representing the go-ahead run. Allen had the first two outs quickly. Now we'll face Garner, who's 0 for 3 tonight, walked and scored back in the fifth. And he brings a lot of power with him into the batter's box. Tying run Weber at first base. Here's the stretch. First pitch. It's down and away. Fastball. Uh, he was sharp the first two hitters. He's been falling behind these last three. And nods yes, he's ready. The 1-0, and a swing and a dribbler foul, third base side, evens things up. 4-2 the lead here in the top of the ninth with two on and two out. Now on the ball behind his back, glove tucked to the thigh as he stares in. Now the hands together, the 1-1. One, one. And it's in the dirt, blocked by Tejeda, trying to get Garner to chase a slider. Fletch might come out here and talk to him. And he's going to. And I wonder if they don't like how off-speed heavy this has gotten here. Well, it starts with him falling behind. I, I think he's throwing his usual mix of off-speed, but usually it's when he's ahead in the count. And his off-speed is designed to get swing and misses. It's not a lot of get-me-over stuff, and when you're behind 1-0 and and you're throwing it, you quickly risk going 2-0. and That Fletch will trot back. It's two and one. With two on, two out, a two run lead here in the ninth. Allen trying to finish it off. Sean Halton follows Cole Garner in the order. Here's the stretch. The two one, and a fastball just missed. Oh man, was that close. It is ball three. Like we said though, with Moscos, it's been a small zone on both sides all night. There's some hot water here. Here's the stretch. The 3 1. Swing and a line drive. Base hit to right. Almost hit Weber. At third, the stop sign will be put up as Mitchell fires in. Nash will cut it off. And it's going to come down to Brad Allen facing Sean Halton with the bases loaded. He had the first two outs quickly, a bloop single, a walk, and now a liner the other way brings the league leader in homers and RBIs to the plate. A really good decision there by Ross Peoples coaching third. He knows that one run doesn't matter, and while Amaral has a decent shot to score there, the out certainly not worth the risk, and you get Sean Halton, one of the best hitters in the league, to the plate. Tonight, 0 for 3 with a walk. Zoe robbed him on a liner and left in the third. And Allen ready to work. The first pitch. Swing and a miss. He chased one in the dirt. They start him off speed, and they get ahead. On his 22nd pitch of the inning. The slider had more downward bite than we normally see. Now ready with it. The 0-1. And a swing and a miss. He went off speed again. 
And jumps ahead, two strikes. Trying to slam the door on this ninth inning threat. So he's gone down low with back-to-back -back breaking balls. I think he's going to come high heat right here to Halton 0-2. Stairs in to Tejeda. Now Halton will ask for time and take a step out. Rev's trying to get this first one. And Halton again will ask for time, bothered by some gnats. Back in there, Allen on the rubber, looking in, he's ready. The stretch, the 0-2, and a fastball low. 91, Halton was loading up, did not pull the trigger. One ball, two strikes. Tying run, Weber at second. Revs play Halton the other way in center and right. Ton of room in left center. Here's the stretch, the pitch. Swing and he beats a foul, just got a piece. Tipped it as a bounce stop off his leg. That was Allen's 25th pitch of the inning. Really working for it. And they went off speed again, down. But Halton able to get a piece. One and two it remains, and Allen steps off again, Halt not ready. Adjusting his batting gloves. Faulty Velcro. <laughs> now Allen ready. The one, two, swing and a pop up. Nash toward the Revs dugout, and it's going to be in the seats by three rows. As he leaned across, he was going to do everything he could, but it was three rows back. And we'll do it again. Allen grabs the rosin bag. Now back on the rubber, staring in. And here's the stretch, another one, two. And a swing and he just got a piece again, a change up. And he just flicked it foul. What a battle. It just looks like he's aimed a few of these pitches. He got ahead. Big, hard, breaking ball in the first pitch. A great chase pitch, but now ahead, he's got to be aggressive again. I like changing the eye level up in the zone, but if it's going to be the bender, tough to bury it with a guy on third, but still. Here's the pitch, and a line drive down the line in left field. It's a base hit. Barnstormers have tied it. Two runs home. Harris will throw to the cutoff man and Sean Halton. With a two-run double down the line in left, it's a 4-4 game here in the top of the ninth. His league leading 80th and 81st RBIs. And how many did he spoil? How many times were the Revs a strike away and Lancaster has drawn even? And now second and third, and not out of the woods yet. Steve Clevenger, the hitter. Now in 28 pitches deep in this ninth inning. First pitch, a fastball, it's in for a strike. It is his fourth blown save, only his fourth in 23 tries. Now the 0-1, and in the dirt, Tejeda makes a run-saving block. 
Halton's league leading 57th extra base hit. Clevenger two for three tonight. Two singles, a walk, and a steal. The 1-1 one -one and a slider just inside. Another close one. Revs in the bottom of the nine. We'll have two, three, and four due up. And as hard as Allen was trying to finish off a win, he's trying to keep this game tied. The 2-1 down and in with a fastball. And the Revs now will have to get somebody else up in the bullpen. He's now thrown 32 pitches. Michael Click will shed the warm-up shirt. The 3-1, and he got it over. A high changeup for a called strike. Josh Bell on deck, a base is open. It's a full count. Allen fighting to try to keep it tied. Damage already done, he's ready. The payoff pitch, swinging a fly ball foul the other way in left. Right over Dickey's barbecue. Thirty-fifth pitch of the inning. He deals, and a high fly foul again. Simpson will give chase from third, but that is back in the second section down at the end of the third base side. And again, I think the strike zone from Frank Urelli has been consistent, but it's a disservice to Allen, who throws his fastball low in the zone so much really relies on ground balls that's how he gets outs and that strike tonight not really available he will try it once more pitch it missed inside ball four and the eighth hitter of the inning will come up it'll be josh bell who before this ninth inning had driven in there two runs two for four a homer in the second an RBI single in the fifth here comes Mace click is ready I don't know if Allen would be available tomorrow night 36 pitches Rebs trying to salvage tonight and keep this game tied pitching change brought to you by Maple Donuts click will come in with the bases loaded two outs Two runs home and the game tied in the top of the ninth inning. 4-4 our score. Hey, it's the good looking genius at Broadway Transmission. You know what really grinds my gears? Perfectly good cars being thrown away just because the transmission went bad. My mind slips into overdrive when someone says, I'll just get a new car before I spend that kind of money on a transmission. What? According to Kelly Blue Book, the average price of a new car is 32 grand. Now you're going to finance that, right? There's another six to eight grand. And if you drive it off the showroom floor, it loses 20% of its value immediately. Don't forget, you also have to pay sales tax, higher insurance rates, title and registration fees, and come up with six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month, depending on your interest rates, for five years. And remember, you will still have to pay for the upkeep of the car, brakes, tires, wipers, fluids, etc. Stop! Trade your transmission, not your car. Thanks, good-looking genius. You're welcome, ma'am. Broadway Transmission. We'll get your shift together and save you all that dough. Visit us on the web at broadwaytrans.com or stop in and see how it's done. It appears both sides have made their arguments and deliberations have concluded. Now, it's hard to tell from where I'm standing, but it looks as though they're about to render their decision. Hang on, hang on. 
That's it. OJ is free with the purchase of a dozen maple donuts. A dozen vanilla sprinkles for me, please. Again, this just in. OJ is free with the purchase of a dozen maple donuts. And as always, every dozen is a baker's dozen in a big white box with orange maple donut lettering. How's that for memorabilia? Maple donuts taste right. Hi, I'm Joel Embiid of the Philadelphia 76ers. Catch Sixers basketball all season on Sports Radio, 1350 WOYK, first in York, first in sports. Now, Michael Click is in next. A difficult ninth inning for Brad Allen and Click will try to keep this game tied in the ultimate of jams. Bases loaded. And he will face Josh Bell. Trying to leave them loaded. Bell two for four tonight. Home run in the second. RBI single in the fifth. Made it two nothing at the time. Click has stranded eight of his 14 inherited this year. Loaded with two outs and his first pitch. A check swing foul back off the net. Bell didn't mean to. He looked surprised that it found his bat. And that appeared to be the cutter from Click moving in on him. Allen had the first two outs quickly. Here's the 0-1. And a fastball just outside. After the first two outs, it was a blue pit from Bo Amaral that kept the game alive. Then a walk, single, two-run double, and then another walk. A 1-1. Mid, missed down low, cutter. So now into a situation where you're almost to the point where you have to come over the plate to him. A lot of off speed in this ninth inning and the Revs have fallen behind. A lot of these hitters getting into tough spots. The 2-1, swing a line drive, right at second, caught by Alexi Casilla, and this game stays tied. And breathe a sigh of relief. Only two runs, three hits, bases left loaded. We go to the bottom of the ninth, tied at four. Donegal offers car and homeowners insurance at rates that are very competitive. So competitive that Donegal's car insurance rates are among the lowest in the state. And if you insure your car and home with Donegal, Donegal will take up to an additional 10% off their already low rates. Donegal, a better value. Contact Coatman Kunkel Insurance at 717-854-0300 or stop in at 3217 East Market Street, York. Locally owned and operated by Pam and Rudy Kochman. Coatman Kunkel Insurance. Insurance. Getting pumped for another year of high school football? All this month, Sports Radio 1350 WOIK lays it all out for you in the High School Football Spotlight, presented by Wellspan Sports Medicine. Catch a preview every day in August on Sports Radio 1350 as we break down the teams and the players of the 2017 York Adams League. Or go to WOIK1350.com to access this year's complete lineup of high school football preview. Then, this fall, every Friday night, it's the High School Football Game of the Week, presented by Wellspan Sports Medicine. Only here on Sports Radio 1350. Celebrate the history of our national pastime at the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum in Cooperstown. See priceless treasures that would bring your baseball memories to life. Cooperstown is where you, your family, and your friends can relive baseball's greatest moments and honor the all-time greats of the game. Plan your family visit today at BaseballHall.org. Hi, this is Dan Patrick. Join me weekday mornings at 9 on Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Bottom of the ninth, Lancaster has tied it up. 
They will go to right-hander John Kuchno on a pitching change brought to you by Maple Donuts. And the Rebs with Casilla who caught that line drive. Blistered right at him by Josh Bell. He will lead it off with Tejeda and Burgess to follow. The Rebs trying to pull off walk-off wins on back-to-back -back nights. Tied up. Casilla one for four in the game. First pitch is over for a strike. Sinking fastball from Kuchno, who's got good movement. The 0-1, and it had so much movement, De La Rosa whiffed, tailing away. It went all the way to the backstop. Kuchno, 1-1, one one, a 3-12 ERA, 17 outings, two starts. So he can go long relief for them. If it goes extras, Rebs might face him for a while. The 1-1, one -one, and a swing and a foul straight back. Rebs have stranded nine tonight, two in each of the last two innings. They were able to add one insurance run last inning, but not more. There's the one, two, and a swing and a foul tip just stayed in there. And that got a piece of De La Rosa. Missed his shin guard, so Frank Urilli will give him some time to recover. Walks the new ball to the mound. Downtown and T-Bone trying to get him fired up on the third base side. Another one, two. And it misses up and away, a change up. Alexi trying to be the table setter and get on. Outfield deep on him, it's center at least, the 2-2. And a line drive at second, it's on one hop actually to Weber. He's got it, throws to first. Hit it off the end of the bat and might have broken it. And one away here in the bottom of the nine. I'm going to bring up Tejeda, who's two for four with a run scored. Kuchno from Baltimore, 26 year old righty, 6'5. 18th round pick of the Pirates in 2012 out of Ohio State. Is anybody going to get the first base side riled up? They're all over there on the third. Kuchno the pitch. And a slider in for a strike. Kuchno had made it to triple A with the Pirates last season, was at double A this year. The 0 1. And a big swing and a Miss, not a foul tip, a slider. The teammate of Chase Simpsons at Altoona earlier this year. Ahead of Tejeda. And the 0-2 swing and a high fly, right field. Garner moving toward the line, just short of the corner. He's got room and makes the catch. Two down here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And Michael Burgess to the plate. He tied the game in the sixth. Two for four with a two-run homer that he tucked inside the foul pole and right in the sixth inning. Line shot that tied the game 2-2. Outfield extremely deep. Amaral in center, Garner in right. Can't play much deeper. 
<laughs> Kuchnow winds, first pitch. Swing a ground ball, hits softly to short. Right there is Zawadzki, he'll throw to first, gets Burgess by a stride, and we are going extra innings here tonight. Lancaster ties it with two in the ninth. Kuchnow with a one, two, three inning. And we're going to the 10th. York and Lancaster tied at four. Hey man, I know how you feel. That guy down the street, the one with the fancy lawn, those weekend get-togethers, the big family barbecues, and the barefoot kids and wife outside working on her tan. Hey, it's no secret. It's greener on that side of the fence. It's heritage lawn and landscape care. Greener grass on your side of the fence is just a quick phone call away. For world-class care right in your backyard, call Heritage Lawn and Landscape Care, 717-292-9994. This is the Dan Patrick Show. I just like to say that y'all rock, man. I think Under Armour and the Warriors both got good deals with Steph Curry. Do we look at Under Armour as that's the new and Nike feels like the old? Not that Nike is going to go bankrupt or out of business anytime soon. But if you look at what Under Armour has done, they've done pretty well with the under 26. It's pretty incredible. Dan Patrick. Mornings at 9 on Sports Radio 1350 WOIK. This is the Rich Eisen Show. Steven Strasburg's contract. Seven years, $175 million. He hasn't been bum garner like. He's not even Scherzer like. And now here's Strasburg with a career ERA just north of three, getting seven years, $175 million. And I say this contract is 100% worth it. Is this the button that plays? The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon on Sports Radio 1350 WOIK. This is Hall of Fame third baseman Brooks Robinson. You're listening to York Revolution Baseball on the home of the Revs. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Head of the 10. Tied at four, Michael Click stays in, got the final out of the ninth inning on a screamer hit by Josh Bell at second, leaving the bases loaded. It'll be Zawadzki, De La Rosa, and Clark. 7-8-9 for Lancaster here in the 10th. Barnstormers one and four in extras. And they went about three months without one. This is their second in three nights. First pitch is on the outside corner at the knees for a strike. Rebs are four and four in extra innings. Last played one on July 31st. At home losing to Long Island in 10. Here's the 0-1 and it misses away. First extra inning game in this year's season series between these two. Here's the stretch, the 1-1, and a ground ball right side, Nash backhands. Click has to get there, and he will in plenty of time. So a three to one hookup for out number one. And what Nash did really well on that play was he fielded the ball circling. His momentum took him initially towards second base but then he took a step towards first before flipping to make sure it was online. Would have been a much tougher flip had he gotten rid of it immediately and he timed click leading him to the base. Now one down here is Anderson De La Rosa who's 0 for 4. Two strikeouts, a fly out and a ground out. Allen had gotten him to start the ninth. He'd gotten the first two and then five straight reached. Here's the first pitch, and a swing and a pop-up toward the first base dugout. Tejeda on the move over, but that'll land about halfway in. And caught by somebody who did not get up out of their seat. Caught it right in his lap, seems to be fine. That Halton at bat in the ninth inning, how many times were they so close to and that foul ball made me think of that. The 0-1, swing and a miss on a cutter away 
or maybe the change up from Click. He had a, a pop-up that got three rows in among his many foul balls, most of which he barely got a whisker of. Here's the 0-2. And a high fly in center. Witherspoon will trot in. He's going to be called off by Mitchell in from right in shallow right center. Catch is made. Two down. We'll pause for station identification. This is Revolution Radio. First in York. First in sports. Your only local sports station. The new Sports Radio 1350. W-O-Y-K, York, Pennsylvania. Two down. Here's Tyler Clark. Tied at four here in the top of the tenth. Clark one for four tonight. And the pitch from Click. It misses up and away. And you talk about the hold and the bat, Daryl, but it really the two biggest at bats in the entire game, that one and the Michael Burgess home run to tie it, that was the ninth pitch of the at bat. He battled there, and it shows you that if you can fight off pitcher's pitches, you're going to get a mistake, and it's so valuable to have those kind of at bats. A fastball missed down and in, 2-0. Oh. Halton, the league leader in RBIs, and... Battles like that, a big reason why. 2-0, and that's down. The click who had gotten the first two outs falls behind a 165 hitter, 3-0. Trying to stay sharp and get his team back to the plate. 3-0 pitch, and he pours it across for a strike. Clark, their backup catcher, DHing tonight. Some guys banged up, unavailable. 3 1. And a line drive toward left center. Witherspoon on the move. He'll have to play it on a hop. He plants, fires it in, holds him to a single. Clark, two for five on the night now. And the number nine hitter keeps the inning alive. We go to the top of the order, and the guy who did just that for Lancaster last inning, Bo Amaral, who blooped a hit. The Rebs had a two-run lead with two outs, and his bloop hit kept the ninth inning alive, and trouble ensued. He's two for five tonight with a run scored. Click with the pitch. It's a called strike. Fastball in near the fists. Amaral, five and a half years in the red system. Earlier this year, AAA Louisville was batting 220. This is the son of 10 year big league vet Rich Amaral. He played in Seattle and Baltimore. Played his college ball at UCLA. The 0-1, and look out, a liner foul off the very left edge of the net. If that's a foot to the left, it's into the seats with not much time to react. Amaral, who earlier this month had an inside the park home run in a comeback win against Sugarland. Click ahead of him here. Clark held at first. Here's the 0-2. And it's fouled off. Third base side and out of play. Tied at four here in the top of the 10th. Talvin Nash due to lead off the bottom of the 10th inning. And again, with regard to that foul ball conversation, it just seems like the teams that foul off the most pitches have the highest averages, and Bridgeport and Lancaster are right up there, one and two. 
Here's another 0-2 and another foul. This one fought off and lined to the left. I mean, obviously we don't keep stats on that necessarily, but just in terms of the eye test, I mean, Barnstormer's really fouling off a lot here tonight. I think part of their transformation has gone from power to average, losing guys like Hobson and Galen, Gindle, and Bridgeport. They really hit for a high average, and they they fight so hard at the plate. Rev's really playing Amaral the opposite way. And another 0-2. And another foul. Fastball up and in. He spoils that. 93 from Click. Click, the ninth inning last night, got the win after allowing a run. Revs would score two in the bottom of the ninth inning. He got the victory. But tonight, trying to go an inning and a third. He got the final out of the ninth inning. Looks over his shoulder at Clark, the runner at first. Here's the stretch. And the pitch, high and away. Amaral, who has continued to foul off fastballs. Witherspoon's now gone all the way into left center to defend him. He's in front of the LED board in left center. And surprisingly, Mitchell and Wright hasn't really moved. The gap is monstrous south here in right center. Now ready again. Long hold and the one two. It missed outside. Amaral continues to duck just in case Tejeda snaps one to first on Clark's secondary lead. Frank Gailey now running up to the clubhouse and right. I don't know if. <laughs> Is he going to get his spikes on? He would have thrown on the side earlier today. Now the 2-2, and it's hit the other way. Foul again, sailing over the seats in left, out onto Arch Street. Now this at bat now, eight pitches old, four two-strike Foul balls from Amaral. And Click will try it again. Look how far to the corner Harris is in left. Pitch is bounced out of the reach of Nash at first. It's into right field. And Clark will go first to third, and they're at the corners. Amaral with his third hit of the night. On the ninth pitch of the at-bat, Nash, who was holding the runner, lunged to the backhand but was unable to reach all the way across to field it. Amaral finds the hole with another seeing eye hit. And let's hope that one doesn't lead to the same results that his blue pit in the ninth inning did. Click again finds himself in a tricky spot trying to keep this game tied. First and third for Garrett Weber. He's two for four with a walk and a run. And the pitch up and in. Click is now 25 pitches into his outing. Revs do not have Westfall tonight. He is inactive. Now the 1-0. And a line drive, base hit right center. Clark in to score, Amaral goes first to third, and Lancaster takes the lead. 5-4 in the 10th inning on a Garrett Weber, line drive single the other way. And in the ninth and the 10th, the Revs had the first two outs, and Lancaster has rallied both times. A 163 hitter singled. Amaral with one of the great at bats of the night. 
another seeing eye hit. And once again, it leads to a big run for the Barnstormers. Here's Cole Garner with first and third. And the pitch, it's down low. Lancaster with three unanswered. In the ninth and tenth. They too have had a whole bunch of late wins here recently. Trying to steal one here in York tonight. The 1-0 and a cutter over for a strike. Three straight singles. Now click ready. And the 1-1, swing and a miss, a high fastball. <laughs> Lancaster with closer Anthony Carter up in the bullpen, and now Garner has some issue with the grip on his bat handle. He'll walk over for some, some of the grip stick. You certainly have to give these Barnstormer hitters a lot of credit. Battling in their at-bats, fighting foul balls. Weber coming through with the opposite field hit, but again, you just feel like Allen and Click, they get the first two outs, and then they're not as aggressive after that. Now field shallow in center and right. The one-two, and a swing and a miss. He chased way, way outside to end the inning. But Lancaster pushes another one across, rallying with two outs, and the base is empty. A run on three hits, and two men left. We go to the bottom of the 10th. Revs now need a run, trailing 5-4. You'll always hit it out of the park with great Best Yet products from your neighborhood SureSave stores. Like party platters with 1893 deli items. Team up Best Yet hot dogs with Best Yet kettle cooked chips. And get Best Yet 12 packs of soda and Best Yet rising crust pizzas at Sobel's Markets in Shrewsbury, Stewartstown, Whiteford, and East York. And at Nell's Market Fresh Foods in Spry. Experience the outdoors like never before with gear and equipment from Relic. We have everything you need for hunting and fishing, items from motorcycle enthusiasts, as well as collector's items, perfect for bars and man caves. Relic is Southern York's only consignment shop that is catered toward men. Come visit us at 215 North Main Street on the Susquehanna Trail in Loganville beside Mama's Pizza. For store hours and more information, follow us on Facebook at Relic Shop. That's R-E-L-L-I-K, shop on Facebook. Getting pumped for another year of high school football? All this month, Sports Radio 1350 WOIK lays it all out for you in the High School Football Spotlight, presented by Wellspan Sports Medicine. Catch a preview every day in August on Sports Radio 1350 as we break down the teams and the players of the 2017 York Adams League. Or go to WOIK1350.com to access this year's complete lineup of high school football preview. Then, this fall, every Friday night, it's the High School Football Game of the Week, presented by Wellspan Sports Medicine. Only here on Sports Radio 1350. The revolution plays here. Play ball! The new Sports Radio 1350. Revs down a run, 5-4 as they come to bat here in the bottom of the 10th. Anthony Carter, Lancaster's closer, takes over. Pitching change brought to you by Maple Donuts. It'll be Telvin Nash, Jared Mitchell, Ryan Dent do up, down a run. Carter, four and three, a 347 ERA, 48 games, 25 saves, which is third in the league. He will not walk you, 46 and two thirds, nine walks. Has given up 47 hits. Three have been home runs. Nash one for four with a homer tonight. First pitch, a slider. It's a called strike. 
Five runs, 14 hits for Lancaster. Four runs on 10 hits for York. Uh, lost the Revs lead, would be back to one game. The 0-1, and a half swing, and he went. Fooled on that offering from Carter. I believe the board said 96, and that thing had a ton of arm side run to it up in the strike zone. 86? I think so. I thought it was in the 80s. No. It is late. Here's the 0-2. And a swing and a miss. Got him to chase way outside and low. So he got ahead of Nash, and I don't think Nash picked up the ball against Carter very well that entire bat. Didn't seem to really see it out of his hand all that well. Had that half swing, and then that one really reaching. Got him to commit early. Here's Jared Mitchell. He's 0 for 2 with two walks, a steal, and a run. Revs trail 5-4 here in the 10th inning. And Carter with the pitch. It's a slider over for strike. So he has started each of the first two hitters with sliders. And then I guess he went change up or maybe split or whatever he's got after that on Nash. 0-1. And it misses outside. Fastball at 89. Mitchell awaiting, pitch, and it's outside, two balls and a strike. Well, the Revs here this past week, four last at bat wins, three of those have come with games in which they've trailed down to their final out. The 2-1, and a swing and a miss, fastball to the outer half. Lancaster down to its final out. Awoke. Almost out of nowhere in the ninth and 10th. Can the Revs, here down to their last two outs in this one, do the same. Now to 2-2. Two -two. And a fastball just missed. Oh, a delayed strike three call. Mitchell rung up, he turns back and can't believe it. And the Revs are down to their final out. And he's really upset. He really takes the face mask off. The zone has gotten so tight here late in this game. And those pitches at the bottom of the knees have not been called until now. And Mitchell screaming at him from the entrance to the Revs' dugout. I think everybody in the place thought it was ball three, including Mitchell, who turned back in disbelief. The call was made about a second and a half after it was caught. Here's Ryan Dent with the Revs down to their last out. First pitch, a slider started right at him and it stayed inside. Dent two for three tonight, two singles and a walk. And the 1 0. And a swing and a well hit ball right center, but coming on is Garner. They had him played deep and it hangs up for him, catches it in medium deep right, and that'll end it. The Barnstormers steal game one in this series, winning 5-4 in 10. Stay tuned, post-game show follows next. This is Dustin Hawkinson with the Keystone Sports Network. For the best Penn State football analysis and commentary, listen to Sports Radio 1350 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 8 a.m. and after Revs games for the Keystone Kickoff Show. 
We'll bring you game reviews, player evaluations, and recruiting news. So for the best in Penn State talk, tune to Sports Radio 1350 WOYK for the Keystone Kickoff Show. Brought to you locally by your neighborhood SureSave Markets. You hear a lot about CPAP masks these days, but here's something you don't hear much about. Over half of the people who wear a CPAP mask for sleep stop wearing it within a year. How's that working for you? Dr. Gordon Bell would like you to hear this. York Dental Sleep Therapy has dental options that can help many of those people. If you or someone you live with is struggling with sleep apnea, visit YorkSleep.com and see how Dr. Gordon Bell can help return your home to peaceful nights of deep, restful sleep. If you're groggy during the workday, if you wake up feeling exhausted, if you would like to get your nighttime sleep patterns back to a healthy state, get a confirmation from your doctor, then meet with Dr. Bell at his office on... 